This is Matt Hurt at Obsessive Viewer on Twitter, and this is ObsessiveViewer.com's The Obsessive Viewer Podcast. Hello and welcome to The Obsessive Viewer, where a movie and TV podcast that covers a specific topic, be it genre, trope, movie, or show, each episode. You can find more of our work at ObsessiveViewer.com. You can also like us on Facebook and join the Facebook group at Facebook.com slash The Obsessive Viewer. And also follow us on Letterboxd at uh, Obsessive Viewer, Obsessive Tiny, I am Mike White, and our contributor, Ben Sears, at Ben Sears. I'm your host, the aforementioned Matt Hurt, and with me today is the just recently aforementioned Ben Sears. <laughs> I remember it fondly. Nice. Uh, how's it going? Pretty good. Good, yeah. good. Uh, we covered a lot of ground on our Patreon thing, which if you want to get, want, if you want get access to, <laughs> if you would like access to exclusive uh, recordings and video reviews and everything, uh, go to patreon.com slash obsessive viewer, pledge a dollar for the audio or five dollars for the audio and video, uh, content. And, uh, yeah, all of the money is very much appreciated and goes toward paying the fees to keep the podcasts running. Yeah. Um, yeah. So, uh, Ben, how, how, uh, how's it going? How's your 2020? Fantastic. Good start. Nice. Um, great. Uh, we, we, how you been? I don't, I don't know how to transition. <laughs> um, pretty good. I've, uh, I've watched, I feel like I've watched a lot of movies already this year. Maybe mm-hmm. not so much in the grand scheme of things, but, um, yeah, it's been a good start. Nice. I mean, the, Early uh, 2021 Best Picture contender Doolittle is out now, so <laughs> right. uh, we're off to a great start. Yeah, oh yeah, I heard <laughs> some rough things. I have not been to the movie theater this year yet, hmm. um, which is troubling to me. I might have to take a trip to the movie theater <sighs> tomorrow. I mean, I was looking at the like Fandango the other day mm-hmm. and... There isn't really, I mean, unless you need to catch up on Best Picture or other mm-hmm. Oscar movies, there isn't really a whole lot out there to watch. I mean, the next one, at least that I'm looking forward to, is uh, the Blake Lively movie, The Rhythm Section. Oh, interesting. Mm-hmm. I that That's interesting. I've watched the trailer a few times Yeah, just in the theater, and it doesn't really do anything for me. Okay. Um. I'll still, you know what? I'll check it out and maybe we can do a review of it. Maybe. Um, yeah. Uh, no, I need you to commit to it right now. <laughs> <laughs> I need you to buy me a ticket. Oh, shit. <laughs> um, uh, guys, go to Patreon, uh, patreon.com slash obsessive viewer. Um, no, if you go to PayPal, if you PayPal us the price of his ticket, uh, Ben will go at whatever time you guys set for him <laughs> um, and he will review it. That goes uh, for any movie, yeah. really. Just pay for my tickets, <laughs> and I'll uh, I'll do whatever you want. Nice. That legally speaking. <laughs> there you go. Um, nice. Yeah, I'm looking. I'm, there's actually quite a bit that I haven't seen in the theater. Um, yeah. Oh, this is gonna be a fun weekend, I think. Um, yeah. Anyway. Um, yeah, we'll get something going. We'll figure it out. So, but what today? What today we're doing? Wow, what we are doing today <laughs> is we are going to be running down the Academy Award nominees for the 2020 Academy Award ceremony. Z- yeah, there you go, ceremony. Uh, that it will be f- Sunday, February 9th. Which it's sooner. It's sooner. Like usually, it's kind of the end of February. Yes, it's um, this year is a very shortened uh, mm-hmm. Oscar year, which we'll surely talk about later. Which will probably, well, who knows how much it'll factor into what wins and what doesn't win. Yeah, yeah, um, yeah. It'll be it'll be interesting. I think. Um, I am so. 
disheartened by the Oscars anyway and just <laughs> awards in general. Uh, check out the episode with IFJ member Evan Tossi uh, uh, last month. But um, yeah, we uh, last year we did a live tweet thing for the Oscars, and I feel like Mike is going to want to do that again. But I'm just I don't even know if I have the energy to watch them. Um, they did announce that they're going to do no. Uh, host again. How do you feel about that? And did you watch it last year? Yes. Okay. I pretty much have watched it every year the past couple of years, mostly okay. because I'm in an Oscar pool and I nice. like to stay up to date on that. Mm-hmm. Um, but yeah, last year I, I feel like it worked just fine without a host. I'm not mad I about it. I did too. Um, and they did just announce for people listening in Indiana, um, Indiana now has uh, legal sports gambling, which you guys yeah. may have heard about when Fekus was on. <laughs> if you drive around pretty much anywhere in Indy, you will see a billboard for some kind of sports gambling, <laughs> Is it something or other. Like there's, I think, DraftKings and yeah. something else. Um, FanDuel, I think. Yeah. But yeah, so more power to them. Um, but they did just announce that for the first time ever, obviously, here in Indiana, you'll be able to bet on the Oscars. <laughs> oh. Which I'm kind of curious about. Like, I kind of want to see, <laughs> like, I kind of I want to try that out, at least for, you know, podcast purposes. Um, so we'll see. I don't know. I'll have... Patreon to- money. Exactly. <laughs> Yes. Guys, pay me money so that I can blow it all on gambling. <laughs> um, but yeah, I'll have to see if Fekus will take me under his wing in the gambling underworld of Indiana. <laughs> and uh, we'll see what happens. Uh, but yeah, so the Oscar nominees came out like at this point a couple of weeks ago, I think. We've been dragging our feet with uh, new podcast content. But I will say that I'm really excited for this year, uh, Obsessive Viewer in general. Um I'm hoping that we get a lot of reviews from you posted on the website. Um, no pressure. Yeah, no pressure. Um, I have this contract here that tells you how many <laughs> that you have to do per month, per word. Um, Matt's yeah. aiming a gun right at my I, face. Yeah. Here's the contract. <laughs> sign it. Or I'll sign... Oh, God. Jesus. This, this, this is way too dark. Or I'll sign the wall. Um, <laughs> I heard you paint houses. Nice. God, that's that's disturbing. So anyway, um, yeah, so we're going to run down the Oscar nominees. Um, I also didn't mind it not having a host or anything. I, and I, I liked the I, I liked live tweeting it and everything because it felt more communal. I'm not a fan of live tweeting anything. And I know, Ben, you're not a fan of tweeting anything. <laughs> because I'm not on Twitter. Exactly. <laughs> but uh, I just, I kind of liked that. But this year, I'm just like, I don't, I, there's more that I can spend my time on i think yeah so we'll see but yeah any other new business before we dive in Mm, not that i can think of okay perfect it's gonna be exciting okay so we are going to be kind of breaking down the academy award nominees for the 92nd academy awards which again will be broadcast live uh from los angeles on february 9th um yeah so uh we're on the AV Club website. Did we agree on that? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Uh, running down the list of nominees. Uh, I'll put a link to in the show notes and everything. So Ben, why don't we just start at the top? Um, best supporting actress. Um, do you want to alternate saying the nominees? So like, I'll start off by saying the nominees, and then when we get to the next one, you start. You do the nominees and alternate. Yeah, that's fine. Okay. Cool. So the nominees for best supporting actress are Kathy Bates for Richard Jewell. Laura Dern for Marriage Story, Scarlett Johansson for Jojo Rabbit, Florence Pugh for Little Women, and Margot Robbie for Bombshell. So, Ben, how do you feel about the this this crop of nominees for the Best Supporting Actress category? Uh, you know, I haven't seen Richard Jewell. Uh, I haven't seen Little Women yet. Uh, from everything I've heard, Florence Pugh absolutely deserves it. Uh, the I think this is probably the biggest controversial snub i guess Mm -hmm. was jennifer lopez not being nominated yeah which i i was shocked by that just because i mean i don't know if we've talked about or if you have talked Mm -hmm. about hustlers on this before but (sighs) even though the movie wasn't perfect or great a whole lot i mean Mm -hmm. 
she makes that movie. She mm-hmm. is a hundred percent deserving of at least a nomination here. Mm-hmm. I don't know about a win, but she was incredible in in Hustlers, and so I'm borderline mad about sure. her not getting nominated, as are a lot of other people. Mm-hmm. Who would you exclude from the nominees list of the ones that you've seen um, in favor of J-Lo? Ooh, um, I really liked Laura Dern. Same with Scarlett Johansson. She's my, Scarlett Johansson's my pick, at, at least who I would want to win. Mm. She, maybe not my pick, but who I want to win, Margot Robbie, probably Margot Robbie. You'd replace her with? Yeah. Uh, okay. Yeah. Nice. Uh, you know, honestly, I I've seen all of them. Mm-hmm. Um, I would. Hey, I've heard Kathy Bates isn't. I mean, she's not in it a whole lot, right? She's not necessarily there. There are some kind of Oscar bait scenes with her. Uh-huh. Um, and I mean, she does fine. She does. She does a good job. Um, yeah, I this is a, it's a tough one. I would. Honestly, as much as I I love the meteoric rise of this actress um, in 2019, I would maybe move Florence Pugh out oh. and put um, J Lo. Okay, but that's tough though because I really like Florence Pugh and I liked her performance. I do think that as much of the internet has said, uh, her performance in Midsummer is stronger and should have been recognized. But genre movies do not fare well. Sure. Um, so yeah, uh, so you said that you're, who you want to win is ScarJo? Yeah. Okay, who do you uh, think will win? It's gonna be Laura Dern. I mean. Oh, really? She's, I mean, almost all of these, uh, acting categories are kind of a formality at this point. I mean, mm-hmm. I, I think they've all swept, like, all the precursors so far. Okay. Um, Laura Dern obviously has swept. I mean, she won the Golden Globe. She mm-hmm. won the SAG, I believe. Uh, oh. She won the. Uh, what else am I forgetting? Mm-hmm. Those Producers are Guild? those are the two major major ones. Okay. But um, she's she's won all of those. Um, the other one that I would, I mean, if I had a magic bullet and could mm-hmm. put in anyone, I would put in. Uh, I'm going to butcher her name, Zhao Shuzhen from The Farewell. Oh, yeah. We talked about her mm-hmm. um, when we reviewed it. Yeah, she was amazing. Yeah. Huh. But that's okay because she's going to be my write-in candidate for president this year. So oh, Nice. Nice. <laughs> night uh, night for president. Nice. I like it. I like it. Uh, yeah, so I think my my want would be probably, uh, you know, I would say Scarlett Johansson, even though Marriage Story was my number one, and I think Laura Dern did a phenomenal job. Um, I think ScarJo. I think there's something about her performance in Jojo Rabbit that I just I really appreciated. Yeah. Um, so I would want her to win. For some reason, I have a feeling that, and again, and this is based on nothing. <laughs> um, uh, I feel like maybe Kathy Bates might surprise. I don't know. Huh. But again, like it's based on nothing. I did not come prepared in looking at the other awards ceremonies or anything. So, um, yeah. So this will be a fun chronicle of how wrong I am about everything. <laughs> well, I mean, I think if you go back and listen to our episode last year, it, you could probably just say the same thing about me. Uh, so I thought you were uh, going to say, like, well, if you listen to the episode last year, that everyone already knows that you're wrong about everything. <laughs> You said it, not me. Yeah, well, you know. <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah, awesome. So that's best supporting actress. Uh, do you want to go down the line? Which ones did you want to kind of skip? Um, we don't have to talk about the sound categories. Really, the okay. only thing I have to say about those is I'm glad that Ad Astra got nominated for the one. Mm-hmm. Um. I, I wish it would have gotten nominated more. We can yeah. talk about that more later. But uh, sound is a good category for it to be on, especially like mm-hmm. I'm thinking of the moon lunar buggy yeah. scene. The sound design was really good there. And the the opening scene when mm-hmm. Brad Pitt's on the satellite thing. Yeah. Um, that was really good. Um, 
but we can talk more about uh, sound later. Although mm-hmm. the the one snub I would say the one nomination that I would have liked to have seen in one of the sound categories was the lighthouse. Yeah, that would have been good. I'm thinking of the 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 the, the lighthouse sound, the foghorn mm-hmm. sound. That's just hearing about how they created that and uh just sound is kind of important in that um it it did end up getting nominated which we can talk about uh when the category comes up Mm -hmm. which i'm happy about but um sound would have been good as well i wasn't expecting really anything for it but sound would i feel like sound it could have gotten a good spot there Um, yeah oh i definitely agree um Worth mentioning, I guess, uh, um, I believe, oh, this isn't the, oh, okay, one of maybe two nominations for The Rise of Skywalker is in sound. Yep. Um, sound and editing. visual effects. Oh, you know what? Because um, it also got nominated it for original score. Oh, yeah. I don't yeah. know if it got nominated for visual effects, actually. Um, production design? Nope. Yeah, um, it did. Visual, visual oh, effects. Okay. okay um, I just want to mention... We didn't do a Star Wars episode. <laughs> um, to be on, I mean, we had Evan on and he talked about it a bit, but we didn't do our normal, like, full blown Star Wars episode because I'm just over it. I'm tired yeah. of it. I don't care. It's um, gotten kind of exhausting at this point. It has. And, like, uh, I didn't. It's not that I didn't. It's not so much that I didn't like Rise of Skywalker. I'm not, like, vehemently opposed to the rise of Skywalker right. or anything. Or at least for me or people that, that do like it. Mm-hmm. I, you can like it just fine and I won't care. Yeah, exactly. But with me, it's just like, I, like I didn't like it. I uh, didn't, I didn't even wrestle with my feelings toward it or anything. <laughs> I just like, I did went through my whole phase where I'm just like, okay, this sucked about it. This wasn't good. Right. This is what didn't work for me. This is what worked for me and everything. And then now I'm just like, okay, I'm fine. It's fun. It's done. Um, yep. So, yep. Uh, yeah. So next category. Sure. Okay. Best original score. So this is my turn. Your turn. Um, Did you want to run through? Well, there's like. Do you want to talk about costume design at all? The, the 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 website that I have uh, has that next. But okay. Uh, yeah, we can do that. I, um, I mean, I I don't know how much I have to say. I'm I do say uh, I'm I'm very surprised that Dolomite is my name didn't get nominated oh, for yeah. that because that would have been a a really good nomination for that. Yeah. For if the anything, record the costume design category is The Irishman, Jojo Rabbit, Joker, Little Women, and Once Upon a Time in Hollywood. Um, and you know, all of those nominees are fine. Like, I agree with them. Yeah. But yeah, Dolomite should have got some kind of recognition there. Yeah. Um, Especially considering the woman that did it mm-hmm. was the one that did Black Panther last year and she oh, won. Yeah. So it's not like it's just some up and coming right. youngster that, that did it. But yep. the costumes in that were fantastic. Um, I am. This is – there's several categories here where I don't feel like Joker should have been nominated, but mm. this is one of them. Um, oh, for costume? I mean, you have the Joker costume. Other than that, I mm. don't know what else there was to nominate about it. You know, uh, I – Or to, to like about it in terms of costumes. I agree. It's more – I feel like the the overall aesthetic of the movie is more about the cinematography and set design rather right. than costuming. I mean, there is – I guess you do have to do some period-specific costuming, but um, I, I can't really think of anything remarkable that – Yeah. I mean, granted, it's been a while since I've seen it, but I can't think of anything remarkable in terms of costumes I, for you anyone. Know, I agree, and like also – to your point about like having to do period specific ones also like i kind of feel like i haven't watched joker in a while but i kind of feel like the time period is left somewhat ambiguous like it's clearly like 
late seventies, early eighties right. Gotham. But when you consider that Gotham is fictional also, um, uh, granted it's basically New York city, but whatever. But like, I feel like that is the main focus is creating this world rather than like through, like I said, through cinematography and set design and everything rather than costuming. Whereas Dolomite is, is my name. That is very specific, very flamboyant yeah. and very just hypnotic. And it's, it's, it's part of who these characters are. Absolutely. You know? It's, it's a reflection of who they are in like, in terms of Dolomite, like his, persona that he adopts mm-hmm. and the the change that he goes through just by wearing a different piece of clothing yeah you know yeah so that's about all i have to say i think the winner will probably be once upon a time in hollywood mm-hmm. um but i could also see little women winning i don't know yeah i agree um, it just kind of depends on the Academy's taste. And yeah. I, I don't know a whole lot about trends in terms of costumes. Same here. Yeah. Um, yeah, I would say my pick would probably be Once Upon a Time as well. Yeah. Um, yeah. And uh, real briefly, I guess, do you want to, do you want to discuss like, what do you think accounted for the, uh, aggressive presence of Joker? In the nominees, because it got the most nominations at, I think, 11? Yes. Uh, oh, boy. <laughs> and what did you think of Joker? <laughs> um, you know, I wrestle with it a lot. I gave it four stars on Letterboxd when I first mm. saw it, and I've kind of been regretting that ever since, because mm. the more that I think about it, the more I dislike it. Mm. Um, really, I, I remember when I saw it, I liked it up until the end. And specifically, the talk show scene, because mm-hmm. um, I feel like all the all the quote unquote subtlety was just gone out the window mm-hmm. at that point. Um, but the more that I have thought about it, the less like the less the movie feels like it's a lot more important than it actually is, or it has a lot more to say than it actually is. I know that's kind of a a common refrain on like Mm -hmm. film Twitter and other critics and stuff, but uh, I think that's a pretty accurate statement. I, you know, and and I, I liked, I liked Joker when I saw it. I haven't seen it since. And I'm not, I I, honestly, I'm not going to change my opinion of it just based on, you know, uh, the general hive mind and everything. Yeah. But I do need to see it again. I did like a lot of it and I liked the way that it depicted the violence and everything and the kind of realistic kind of tones that it struck. Sure. Um, but, <laughs> but I saw a just beautiful, beautiful letterbox review. Um, that uh from i i don't know the username but one of the <laughs> one of the kind of feet not featured but like popular letterbox yeah. reviews of joker was one star and it said if you've never swam in the ocean then of course a pool seems deep <laughs> i i think i like that one yeah yeah uh um, i saw that one too yeah and like granted i haven't seen it since the theater so i i i don't at this point, I don't agree with that sentiment. Um, also, I haven't seen any of the... Were they all Martin Scorsese movies? Um, that it really plays into and and uh, kind of adopts a tone from. Mm-hmm. Um, but I just want to like that. That is just epic level burn in terms <laughs> of uh, criticizing. Like, just like a throwaway criticism. I yeah. Think. Um, and I just wanted to share that cause I was just, I was so, I, I thought it was really clever. Right. Um, yeah, I feel like, like <sighs> the one thing that really did make me angry when I saw it was, uh, there are two specific scenes where there is a little person in it and the little oh, person yeah. is in it specifically to get made fun of or to yeah. be laughed at. And I did not like that. Yeah. Uh, oh, yeah. It was stupid and unnecessary and 
uh, the the people that cracked up in the theater when they happened was just uh, unfortunate. That sucks. And I then don't know. you left the theater and you saw those people dancing on the staircase. Yeah. Yeah. Um yeah, that uh that's Oh yeah, that that's another it, it didn't make me angry, but it was just so weird that that music choice of yeah. at the end when he's dancing on that staircase. It's just mm. it did, it was weird tonally. It was the wrong song to play for it. Mm. Uh, I learned later that the guy that performs it or whatever is a convicted pedophile. Yeah, Ugh. that's that is uh, <laughs> that's messy. That's messy. Right. Yeah, I do need to see it again. I will say that. I yeah, I probably do too, and I don't really want to, but yeah, I probably will. Yep. Um, um sorry. The best original score. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, uh, real quick oh, yep. to hang on to costume design. Oh, yep. Hustlers, again, I feel like oh, could yeah. have been nominated here because um, there were some really uh, inventive costumes mm-hmm. for that. Uh, not to put your mind in the gutter. Right. But, <laughs> yeah. Um, <laughs> yeah, I, I, I really liked uh, there were all these different costumes for the main characters and they uh, – Again, kind of like with Dolomite, it it helped to to explain their characters a little bit, you know. I agree, and there was a lot of intricacy to them, um, mm-hmm. to them, like and just like kind of the, the imagery surrounding it. Like I know one of the big popular scenes from the movie. I didn't honestly. I just I just didn't really get Hustlers. I I just couldn't connect to it. But like that that fur coat that she has, yeah, and it's like just it's hypnotizing. Yeah, um, it's fantastic. Makes you want to climb into it, <laughs> right? <laughs> Uh yeah. Anything so anyway, else costuming? No. Okay. Um, original best original score? score. Yes. Yeah. Um, oh boy, you give me all the. I know. I. That's why I wanted you to weird read these. Swedish name or whatever <laughs> right off the bat. Hilder G for go- Joker. Well played. Alexander Desplat, Little Women, Randy Newman, Marriage Story, Thomas Newman, nineteen seventeen, John Williams, Star Wars, Episode Nine. Yes. So, a couple things about this category. One, as I said earlier, uh, Marriage Story was my number one movie of the year, um, and I liked Randy Newman's score. However, I would be remiss or I would be lying if I said that I didn't find it at times a little distracting, um, specifically because throughout my first viewing of the movie, I was like, that this music sounds like a Pixar movie. Um <laughs> And, like, I was thinking more of, like, um, Up. Okay. Um, which I believe was scored not by Randy Newman, but maybe um, Michael Giacchino. Um, but, yeah, I did find that kind of distracting a little bit just because it's Randy Newman and he has a distinctive style and everything. However, um, I will say that my pick... No, like the, the, like my my definitive pick for this category is Thomas Newman's score for um uh 1917. Um okay. I thought that that score was magnificent. Uh and yes, Michael Giacchino did do the music for Up. Anyway, um yeah, like just the score for 1917 I thought was was spectacular. It does this might seem derogatory toward the movie or disparaging of it, but it seemed like the score was doing more emotional heavy lifting than I would say any other, any other music in any of the other nominees. Yeah. Um, because there's not much character development. There's not much propulsion of, of character plot, but that vacuum was like overtaken by Thomas Newman's score. Like he kind of carried that. I don't want to say dead weight, but he carried that void to a very emotionally satisfying um, kind of display. Um, yeah, How do you feel agree. about that? And yeah, I would agree. Uh, I I think the score was one of the better aspects of the movie um, mm-hmm. for 1917, um, which you will be having a review post uh, soon. Yeah, um, probably in the week leading up to the Oscars. And I feel like the. I mean. This isn't an original uh, review of the movie, 
but the the whole thing kind of feels like a video game. I'm yeah. sure everyone has heard that remark so far, but I think it's it's pretty accurate. And yeah. even right down to the score, where like you know, like right before you go and fight a a mm. boss or something, the score to or like in uh, I'm thinking of the Resident Evil movies oh, where yeah. you know some something bad is around the corner Mm -hmm. and then like in 1917 the the music starts to ramp up a little bit and you start to get this eerie feeling um so i i like the score there yeah um as for my pick it'll probably be joker just because it's won the i think i'm pretty sure it won the golden globe um and so and who uh, did the score for that again (sighs) My man Hilder. Yeah. I think uh, it may actually be a woman. <laughs> Mr. G. Yes. Uh Mr. or Mrs. G. Yes. Um or so, Ms. Yes. <laughs> uh so that's and I, I from what I remember I liked the score for Joker mm-hmm. at the time. So I I would be okay with it winning here. Nice. And just to uh point out it's Hilder Gwanda Tator. You muffle that, but Gwanda um, Doter. Yes, Gwanda Doter. She get Google Translate on it. Oh, nice. Uh, she's from Iceland, and she did the music, or she was in the music department. Oh, wow. Um, uh, Chernobyl, oh. uh, Sicario, Sar- Sicario, a Day of the Soldado, um, and Arrival. So, but it just says music department. So I don't know if okay uh, what role she had. But yeah, um, just shout out to her. Um, yeah, uh, and uh, I don't remember much of the score from Little Women, uh, so I'll refrain from that. Star Wars, sure. Um, you know, yeah. John Williams has enough Oscars. <laughs> yeah. Um, let's see. The next couple on here. Uh, ah, sorry. The next couple on here are best short film animated and best short film live action. Uh, did you want to talk about that? Cause I know you've seen a couple of them. Yeah. So I, uh, I have seen all of the animated shorts. Nice. I've seen all of the shorts live action except with an asterisk for brotherhood. So, okay. Almost all of the shorts. Uh, Do you want to read them real quick? Yeah, sure. Okay, sorry. Best short film animated is Daughter, Hair Love, Kitbull, Memorable, and Sister. Nice. Um, but sh- best short film live action are Brotherhood, Nefta Football Club, The Neighbor's Window, Saria, and A Sister. Okay. Um, and then. Documentary short, In the Absence, Learning to Skateboard in a War Zone if You're a Girl, Life Overtakes Me, St. Louis Superman, and Walk, Run, Cha-Cha. Um, so almost all of these are available either on YouTube or Vimeo. Mm-hmm. If people out there that are Oscar completists slash psychopaths like me um, <laughs> and want to try and view as many of them as possible, nice. um, you I, can find them on there pretty easily. Nice. Uh, I believe Kitbull is available on Disney+. Plus. I've heard that as well, yeah. yeah. Um, the uh, other... Uh, I, I found a, a website uh, or a, an article that said uh, where you can view each of these, and it's got them all in a list, which I'll email you so oh, you can sweet. put in the show notes. Uh, the other easy way to do that is to go on my letterbox where I nice. say where I saw them all. Nice. Uh, and in the case of some of them, like uh, Daughter, it's kind of it's a hard to find uh, short film. Um, so follow the link in my letterbox and you'll find it there. Nice. Um, so that's, that's, um, so brotherhood, brotherhood is a short film live action. It's on, uh, YouTube, but it doesn't have English subtitles. Oh, so you can still watch it. And, okay. And, uh, I mean, I, I don't know if I'll watch it and consider it, uh, counted, but, so that's why you said with an asterisk. Right, yeah. Okay, So nice. unless you speak, like, Tunisian, I think it mm-hmm. is. Um, I dabble. Yeah. Uh-huh. Um, the other one, In the Absence, or no. 
Life Overtakes Me is on Netflix. Um, St. Louis okay. Superman is the one that I couldn't find anywhere. And okay. In the, the article hmm. that I'll send you, it, it doesn't have anything on there either. So I don't know if it's able to gotcha. be viewed at all. Okay. Uh, it's probably going around festivals or something, but, yeah. um, in terms of best short film animated, I know you had very high things to say about hair love. Yes. Um, did you want to touch on that? Oh boy. Um, <laughs> that, there was a short animated last year called One Small Step, and mm-hmm. I've rewatched that a couple times, and I cry every single time, even oh, wow. though I know what's coming. Mm-hmm. And so that one, uh, Hair Love kind of did the same thing for me. Nice. I I watched it uh, at work before hmm. any of my bosses got there, and oh, no. I was just a wreck, just yeah. <laughs> sitting there and watching it. And uh, it, there's a, a turn later on where uh, you don't really see it coming, or at least I didn't. Okay. And it's it's devastating. Mm. Um, I that being said, I think the pick is probably memorable for animated. Okay. I don't know about any of the other ones. I I don't know enough to pick anything confidently. Gotcha. Okay, and so, I'll abstain from those because I, I haven't watched any of any of the short film category. The other Oops. thing I think I know Keystone uh, Landmark Keystone yeah. did a day or two last year where they screened all of them kind of in a row, mm-hmm. and AMC might do the same thing this oh, year. That would be good. Um, but if if you have a spare couple hours yeah. to spend at the theater, go and check them out there. And I'm sure Brotherhood will be without subtitles there. So, <laughs> right. Also, that same theater does Oscar viewing parties. Yeah. Um, which I've I think we talked about last year, but I've been curious about it. But also just like yeah, I don't know if I want to watch the Oscars and. That, that would that would be even more daunting this year with the Irishman <laughs> oh, three and a God. half hours. Yeah. Oh <laughs> no, then, I mean the actual Oscar ceremony. That oh had. right, right. Yeah, yeah, um, yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, you, what I'm talking about is uh, like AMC will do like mm-hmm. an Oscar marathon weekend where they just yeah. screen all the Best Picture nominees in a row. <sighs> so yeah, that the would Irishman be Irishman and Once Upon a Time in Hollywood. Yep. <laughs> and. Ford v Ferrari is like two and a half hours. Yeah, it's like two and a half hours, yeah. So, Um, yeah. Uh, Shall we go on to the best supporting actor category? Sure. All right, I'll read these off. Uh, (laughs) They are all very easy to pronounce. Um, We've got best supporting actor nominations are Tom Hanks for A Beautiful Day in the Neighborhood, Anthony Hopkins for The Two Popes, Al Pacino for The Irishman, Joe Pesci for The Irishman as well. And Brad Pitt for Once Upon a Time in Hollywood. And you have not seen A Beautiful Day in the Neighborhood. Correct. Um, you did write a review for The Two Popes that is live on ObsessiveViewer.com. Correct. Uh, how do you feel about this category? Um, you know, I am pretty okay with it. There aren't really a whole lot of snubs um, that that I uh, can bring to mind right away. Um I mean, there there are some that I would have liked to have seen, but mm-hmm. were pretty long shots. Um, Brad Pitt's going to win, so you think so? Yeah. yeah, he's he's also won like he won the Golden Globe, he won the SAG. Uh, yeah. Um. So it's it's pretty much a done deal. Do you don't think Joe Pesci might sneak in? I would love it if he did. Mm-hmm. Um. Because he he's my uh, who I would want to win, but okay. um, so here's my thing with Brad Pitt and Once mm. Upon a Time. It's a great performance, and I liked it, and I'll be happy when he wins because he has not won an Oscar yet. Right? Oh wow, I don't, I, I don't think he has. Yeah, I don't think um, so. But I had this thought when I was watching it most recently. Don't you think that his character would have been essentially the same if it was played by Matthew McConaughey? Couldn't you see that happening uh, and not being a whole lot different? I guess I because he's doing can. the Texas accent. He's this laid back kind of yeah. stonerish guy. Um, I, I can, don't know. I can see that. And uh, kind of as a brief aside, did you see the Beach Bum? 
No. Don't see Ugh. a beach bum. It's no. Bad. It's uh morbid curiosity led me to finally watch Spring Breakers last year and oh, I yeah. was angry at everyone that put it on their like best of the decade list. Yeah. Cuz oh, yeah. oh my god. It's it's not it's it's not great. Um but the beach bum is surprisingly not great or um it's worse. <laughs> um and Brad Pitt has you're right, Brad Pitt has not won an Oscar yet. So okay. I think uh I think that might go a long way to getting him one this year. I liked his performance though. I thought it was good and like that's a good that's a fair point about Matthew McConaughey, but uh yeah, I think it's you know, I think I think I it's know. still acceptable. Yeah. I mean, I I don't think anyone else has said it, so mm-hmm. uh, I might just be crazy here. But sure. um, how would you feel about? Because um, it's it's a supporting performance. Uh, I think his name's Song Kang Ho from Parasite. Oh yeah, the, the dad, the poor mm-hmm. dad. Uh, that's a supporting performance. I I'm pretty sure. Yeah, I would say. I would say so too that it's it's very difficult especially with that movie because it's an ensemble piece yeah. so it's it's kind of dif- difficult there but I would say yeah supporting yeah um man that would have been cool yeah yeah, yeah. it's um, and I don't know who I would have taken out here cuz Al, Pac- yeah. Al Pacino I really liked in it so maybe I I I'm sure most people would probably say him mm-hmm. but I would honestly say, uh, and he's getting so much love for it, but I would say take out Joe Pesci. Hmm. Um, I kind of feel like, because I was, it, it's not that I was underwhelmed by his performance. I just thought that it was fine and it felt like kind of just more the fact that he was playing against type than anything right. else. And like, it's very subdued and everything. That's fine. But... In a way, I kind of I really liked Al Pacino's kind of more boisterous performance as uh, Jimmy Hoffa in in the movie. Um, yeah, I, I think I liked that better. I just liked Pesci, just how yeah, it, it is very against type, and I uh, I guess I really only know most of his bigger performances, like from. Obviously, Goodfellas and yeah. Raging Bull. Uh, so it's heard. it's very very <laughs> much against what those characters were. But and lest we forget Home Alone and Home Alone Two: Lost in New York. Yeah, yeah, of course, which he was snubbed for as well. I'm sure. Right. Yep. Um, <laughs> but there's I, I this scene struck me when I watched it uh, last. Um, there's a scene when. This younger mobster, I, uh, Crazy Joey. Yeah. Uh, he like insults Joe Pesci and the look that Joe Pesci gives him, mm-hmm. like he, it's just this stone faced look, but you know, he's just so pissed off and yeah. angry. And it's, it's just really subtle and really well done. And then the dial, there's, um, another scene later on. Uh, at the uh, the Frank Shear and Appreciation Dinner, when mm-hmm. kind of all the big shit goes down, yeah. um, and he has this just really simple, subtle dialogue, um, and I think all he really says is like, "It is what it is," mm-hmm. but you know, like you know what kind of weight it. goes behind that, yeah. and um, how serious he is, That's and you know point. that you can't fuck with him, yeah, even though he's this old short guy right he's scary yep. almost i uh yeah i i know what you mean but um, but also the other side of him too is like there's uh a couple scenes when uh robert de niro's character talks about how his daughter doesn't like joe pesci mm-hmm. and like he's trying to uh get her good graces and try to make her happy and the scenes where she kind of like turns him down and uh, just wants nothing to do with him. Yeah. You, you kind of see just how much it means to him that this little girl likes him. Mm-hmm. So um, I, I, I was really impressed with Joe Pesci. So I, okay. I want him to win. It's not going to happen, but yeah. you know, 
It is um, what it is. <laughs> nice. Well done. <laughs> well done. Um, I would think it's a safe bet would be Tom Hanks, I think would be safe, a safe, safe boat vote, I think, because I can okay. see him getting it. Um, yeah. Shall we move on to the next? Sure. Okay. Do- I have documentary? Yes. Okay. Feature. Best documentary feature. American Factory, The Cave, The Edge of Democracy, For Sama, and Honeyland. Yes. So I have seen two of these. Okay. Uh, I saw For Sama and Honeyland. Um, notable um, snubs for me. Granted, I haven't seen The Edge of Democracy, The Cave, or American Factory. Um, I was disheartened to see that Apollo 11 was not nominated. Yeah. I I just I felt that was a really strong documentary and I, I kind of wish that it would have um, gotten it. Yeah, I I think a lot of other people were as well because I I think the thing that probably doomed it was that it came out what, what like last January or February I think um, it came out early last year. I almost want to say July to coincide with oh. the anniversary the moon landing. Okay. Yeah. Um. But, yeah, uh, I could see that, it not being as fresh in people's minds. Um, yeah. I... That's oh, no, really January. the only reason that you're I can right. think of why it wasn't nominated. Yeah, you're right, it, it was January. It is a very good documentary. Absolutely. Um, I loved it. For As far as the documentaries that I did see, For Sama, we talked about in the Patreon uh, section, but yeah. I really, really liked for sama yeah um and oddly enough i did not like honeyland i couldn't connect to it how did you feel about those and what Ooh. which other ones have you seen uh i have seen all of them except for the cave i nice. will uh watch the cave before the ceremony but mm-hmm. um the um the edge of democracy i i don't know it was fine um it's just this for those of you that haven't seen it, it's just uh, if you've seen any kind of political uprising or political corruption kind of mm. documentary, it's just like that. Okay, it's about democracy in Brazil or the lack thereof. Okay, um, and I don't know. I felt like it was a little too long. Okay, um, sure. It's not bad, but I mean, it's I I would put. Apollo 11 and all above it, mm-hmm. I would even put uh, One Child Nation and above it as well. Um, another one that I feel was one of the bigger snubs. Um, Honeyland, I, I really loved. Interesting. Um, okay. Yeah. Uh, it's just this simple story and then just the way that it progresses and the conflict that happens, you feel like it it has this real uh, stakes to it, honestly. Mm-hmm. I mean, uh, it's it's a. I, I always love documentaries that just kind of put a focus on either a lifestyle or some kind of aspect of culture that you know you don't normally see here mm-hmm. in America. Um, so I I really liked it. Not not to mention like the cinematography of it was just really great. Right. So yeah. And see, I I couldn't connect to it specifically because of the kind of cinema verite kind of style um mm-hmm. which is weird because and I think I said this on another podcast but it's weird because I didn't like Honeyland for that reason but I loved Apollo 11 for that reason. So it's kind of a conflict for me. But also, I think it's more that I just I was aware of Apollo Eleven better, and I would have gotten more out of Honeyland if if it did a more conventional way of communicating like what the kind of overarching story was. Yeah, maybe that's just a fault of my own um, rather than of the movie. But I just couldn't connect to it. Yeah, yeah. So, are you saying that you don't get your honey from a cave side or a cliff side in Macedonia? Oh, I get was... my honey from all over the place. <laughs> Um, that's, that's sounds, uh, very weird. Um, moving on. Yeah. Um, uh, no, but no, I don't know. American do not. factory is good. Um, mm-hmm. I, uh, for reasons that I'll get into in a minute, I, I feel like it could be the favorite. Mm-hmm. Um, 
for Sama is a hundred percent what I would pick. Mm-hmm. Um, not officially, but what I would want to win. Sure. Um, part of me kind of wants American Factory to win just because, just so that when the the people get up there and give their acceptance speech, they can say thanks, Obama. <laughs> <laughs> I like that. <laughs> so, what is the, what is the kind of subject of American Factory? Okay, so it's about this uh, auto glass manufacturing plant in okay. Dayton, Ohio. Oh, uh, nice. that closed down in the recession in two thousand eight, mm-hmm. um, and then this well, it was a GM factory in two thousand eight, and so in. I want to say 2012, maybe 2015, uh, a Chinese company, company, the auto glass company, comes in and opens it back up again. Okay. And so it's this kind of culture clash because they bring in a bunch of their Chinese employees to kind of teach the Americans how to do it. And it's this culture clash of just the way that the Chinese people do uh, labor and working and how they view it versus Americans. And it's, it's a really interesting look at it. Um, nice. so it's available on Netflix. Correct. Okay. Produced by the Obamas. Okay. Gotcha. <laughs> okay. That makes more sense now. Yes. Okay. Nice. I'll have to check that out. Yeah, it's good. Yeah. Um, but to make an official pick, I think yes. it'll actually be Honeyland, honestly. Interesting. Because it was also nominated for Best International Feature I Film. I saw that. And so I feel like that kind of is an indicator of how the Academy feels about it. Mm-hmm. So that's mostly what I'm basing it on, not to mention that it's really good. I don't know what kind of I, – I haven't really paid attention to the precursors, who's mm-hmm. won the best documentaries there, but – um I'm probably going to go with Honeyland. Interesting. And I mean, that, that would be very interesting to see. Has, so uh, should we move on to international feature? Um, sure. Okay. Uh, for, for just for rec- for the record, I would love to see for Sama win best doc. Yes. So best international feature film. We've got Corpus Christi, Honeyland, Les Miserables, Les Miserables, <laughs> um, so sorry. You ugly American. Yeah, I know. Uh, Pain and Glory and Parasite. Now, we were talking about Honeyland. Do you know offhand, how often has an international feature film category had a documentary? If ever? I think this is the first time. That's interesting. I, I find that very interesting. Plus, it's the first entry for Macedonia, I believe oh, it's from. Oh, nice. So it's the first entry for whatever uh, Mm -hmm. nation submitted it. So okay, I will say that of these of these nominees, I've seen three. I've seen Honeyland, Les Misérables, and Parasite. Les Misérables pisses me off. Not (laughs) for Les Misérables, not not to the fault of Les Misérables. So it's not it's not an adaptation of the musical or anything. It's it's a kind of gritty French. Uh, uh, police drama about um, kind of corrupt cops in France. And during, uh, this is my ugly American ignorance, but during a point of turmoil in French history, uh, recent French history, um, what annoys me about it is that Les Miserables was France's entry into like their, their choice for, um, for the Oscar nominations and not, Portrait of a Lady on Fire. Yeah, which I loved. That loved. was that was baffling. Yeah, I, I, I and I've seen Les Misérables. It's fine. Um, I made the joke to you off mic and to Letterboxd um, that it is basically Le Training Day. Um, but Portrait of a Lady on Fire. Like I just recently rewatched it, and God, it's it's gutting, and it's yeah. it's just so just raw and emotional. Um, it, oh, I, I loved it, but it's just, it's baffling to me. Like you said. Yeah. Um, do you think that Parasite's nomination in that Parasite's infiltration of international feature film and best picture will split the vote and make it go on un, unsung? That's a tough question. Cause I feel like I, we all kind of went through the same 
thought last year with Roma. Oh, yes, um, we did, didn't we? Mm-hmm. God, Roma was so good. It's coming <sighs> to Criterion Blu-ray next month, so in a few okay. weeks. Okay. Yep. I'll I've just watch it on Netflix. I know. Um, I know. Yeah. <laughs> I've got a pre-order just because I'm going through such a Criterion kick. Okay. Um, but it's, I, 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 I don't know. I, I want, I love the idea of owning a physical copy of that. A hundred percent. Yeah. Yes. Um, no, I, I think it'll still be Parasite that wins. Um, Best International? Yeah. Okay. So, I have seen, I've also seen three, but I have mm-hmm. seen Honeyland, Pain and Glory, and Parasite. I've, yeah, okay, yep, yeah, sorry. And and how is Pain and Glory? It's good. Okay. I've heard incredible know. things about Antonio Banderas. Yeah, we'll get to that. Okay, <laughs> sure, sure. Um, yeah, it's, uh, uh, it was my first experience with the uh, the director, Almodovar, mm-hmm. um, and... So I didn't really know what to expect, but um, it was good. Uh, I have no real major complaints about it. Um, I tried looking to see if you can watch Corpus Christi, and you really can't, unless you're like in Poland or Germany or Ah. one of those. So um, all the international listeners out there, just feel free to let us know how it is. And um, but. Please do. (laughs) (laughs) Um, Yeah, I think it'll still be Parasite. It's it's just head and shoulders a better movie Mm -hmm. than the rest of these. Nice. Yeah. uh, You know, I agree. Um, Parasite is just it's uh, it's it's a powerhouse. Yeah. Um, A parasite house. It's a powerhouse. Um, <laughs> you leave in that dead air there. Yep. Thank you. I will. Oh, yeah. Um, by the way, when listening to the year in review episode, I brought up how Parasite and Knives Out are so similar. And I mentioned that I mentioned to a lesser extent, Ready or Not is similar as well in terms of themes. And then I went on to say, like when, when Mike Mike said, well, I wouldn't say lesser than I went on to say, well, well, Knives Out and parasite both take place in one central location a giant house it's like like when listening back to it, i was like what what did i think <laughs> ready or not was like i saw ready or not it's the like it same thing it takes place in a big house like that's that's what it is so yeah i'm i'm dumb you're canceled i know yep yep just like stephen king um <laughs> so <laughs> i'm getting so much mileage out of that i don't know why i don't know why either <laughs> yeah yep but uh, i will say that stephen king did tweet uh the something best tweet. crappy lately it right? was well oh yeah oh yeah well the whole cancel thing is that he tweeted that the actually it's pertaining to this that's amazing um <laughs> we're not on a tangent <laughs> this is so weird but um you're welcome <laughs> yes uh so he tweeted that um he since uh, like he has he he's a voting member of the academy and uh, like he votes for like screenplay and a couple other things i think um but he said that he doesn't take diversity into account he just takes the he just takes the quality of the work into account oh yeah which in theory is an opinion <laughs> um but in practice it's like it's a rich white guy <laughs> like complaining about diversity. Yeah, I wouldn't even say complaining about diversity. I would say that he is just oblivious to why diversity should be taken into account because yeah. it is so hard for uh minorities, minority people and like for diversity to be celebrated in a sea of white people. Um yep. But yeah, but he did redeem himself by tweeting a tweet today saying that he, uh, let me look it up actually, cause it's, it's, it's a doozy. It's a doozy. <laughs> um, so yeah, dead air, dead air, dead air, dead air, dead air. Searching um, through Twitter. Yeah. I'm actually going to his Facebook page. Cause I know. Let me see if there's any others. Here it is. Um, and real quick, how are we on time? Do you have a, do you have We're a good. hard stop? Okay. My family doesn't need me. Okay, sure. Um, okay. So Stephen King's tweet was, I went to the local apiary to buy a dozen bees. They gave me 13 and said the last one was a freebie. 
So, mm. Stephen King, you are uncanceled. <laughs> um, no wonder he's such a prol- prolific writer. Yes, because he just churns out gold <laughs> like that. Um, yeah. So anyway. Um, oh, real quick, yeah. uh, snub or two for foreign films. Oh, yes. Uh, Transit. Uh, mm-hmm. which I saw before the end of the year and really liked. I don't know if I can accurately explain why, um, but it's it's a very good movie, uh, or at least I thought so. I'm sure a lot of people probably, it's not their speed or anything, but yeah. um, Transit's very good from Germany. Mm-hmm. Um, Atlantics, one mo- it's a movie that I didn't really care a whole lot for, but there was definitely a lot of buzz about it and uh i think it was kind of viewed as a snub so um because i'm I'm pretty sure it was on the short list for nominations Mm -hmm. but um transits available on amazon if you want to check it out uh atlantics is on netflix so there you go Cool. I did not get a chance to see either of them. Um, I was very curious about Atlantics, but I just didn't get around to it. It's fine. Okay. I, yeah. Cool. A lot uh, of people love it. I didn't so much. Okay. Um, I would say, I don't remember if I said what my pick for international film would be, but I agree. It would probably be Parasite. Um, of the three, I'm, I guess Les Miserables, but I just, I still, I'm just so just annoyed that yeah. it's not uh if portrait. portrait of a lady on fire was nominated then it would be a whole different conversation oh, i feel totally. like um because that's God, a that movie was so good pretty incredible uh head to head yes so. which you have a review of portrait of a lady on fire posting soon on the website yep and uh just want to throw out uh my my good friend karen rot over at hypable.com uh, she had published today a very just beautifully written review of uh, Portrait of a Lady on Fire. So I'll put a link to that in the show notes. And uh, yeah, and of course, I'll link to yours when it, when it posts. So yeah. Okay. Um, do you want to... So the next couple of categories we have are uh, production design, editing, and cinematography. Do you want in in visual effects? Do you want to kind of double up our discussion of production production design and editing, and then double up cinematography and visual effects? Sure. Okay. Uh, do you want to run down production design and editing? Please? Okay. Best production design: The Irishman, Jojo Rabbit, 1917, Once Upon a Time in Hollywood, and Parasite. Best editing: Ford v Ferrari, The Irishman, Jojo Rabbit. Joker and Parasite. Nice. Sorry. I had this. Okay. Um, so, uh, what? How do you feel about production design? Um. God, that is it. That that's a stacked category. Yeah. Um. Jojo Rabbit's a bit of a surprise. Mm-hmm. Um. I mean, I guess there are a whole lot of period specific details, um, that worked, but, uh, uh. I remember walking out of Parasite. I, I said to my friend that I saw it with, mm-hmm. if Parasite is not at least nominated for production design, I will be very angry. Mm-hmm. So I'm glad that it's uh, nominated here. Um, I would love to see Parasite win because the production design is just incredible when Mm -hmm. you really think about it just it works on a visual level it works on a metaphorical level it works just on a visceral level level. yeah Yeah. um so metaphorical (laughs) sorry (laughs) um just the the way that they i mean just the the mansion that they designed Mm -hmm. and built from scratch um it really has like a kubrickian feel to it like I'm, I in particular, obviously the overlook. It kind of feels yeah. like just the way that Bong Joon Ho uses space in in the movie is just astounding. Right, and I'm thinking of like the uh, on, when I said like a metaphorical level, mm-hmm. like it's got that sub basement mm-hmm. that you go down into, and uh, just the way that that's laid out there. Mm-hmm. 
Um, it, yeah, it, it's such it's such a brilliant like visual metaphor for like just different worlds yeah. existing coexisting without knowledge of of presence of and then like the the main part of the house is their like living room mm-hmm. with the giant open window looking yeah. out into their yard and it's like this this is their only view of like nature and the world mm-hmm. like as it is and that's just such a, a really well done God, I want to watch it again <laughs> um. <laughs> well and then also the the poor family's house mm-hmm. and just yeah, how and that's laid out and yeah like they're they're below the street level yep they look up into the street through mm-hmm. their main through their main window and that's kind of like they see like people drunkenly pissing mm-hmm. in the alleyway and then like i feel like such an idiot because i did not like piece together that juxtaposition that yeah wow okay um yep. and i i think i probably picked that up from one of the other podcasts that i listened to when i'm not listening to obsessive viewer thank you uh, i was gonna say you definitely <laughs> did not pick it up from us but the gun Although down I'm, <laughs> um, I'm very proud of my review with kirsten of it though yeah that was yeah. good thank you um i was totally fishing for that um, yeah. <laughs> but then um the to to go back to the poor family's house like i'm thinking of like their bathroom and how that's mm-hmm. laid out just it's it's just a funny visual of how yeah cramped and tiny it is and how they have to sit like they're they're sitting up there uh next to the toilet to get a wi-fi signal yeah and it's it works on just so many levels i can't Mm -hmm. i don't know what else i would pick if if not for parasite well so we're talking about production design and i mean that is totally like worthy of it but like i said this is it's a stacked category. Like yeah. Parasite has those intricacies that the that kind of visual metaphor and and so much to it. But you also have Once Upon a Time in Hollywood, which I mean, that is like showcasing showcasing an era in such vivid detail. Yeah. That it's and it's also, you know, Hollywood likes to jerk itself off so there's that portion of it i i can see once upon a time in hollywood winning um yeah just because i just it's mind-boggling to think of like all of those old like just the neon signs that they had to get for it um and then all the scenes where brad pitt's driving around and Mm -hmm. just how expansive it all must have been absolutely that and then and then you have 1917 which is a sprawling like epic of it's a, it's a sprawling landscape of epic proportions yeah and the way that it just like flows together like obviously there are cuts and everything but it's like just you can track the the their progress throughout it and just thinking of just what went into designing that from a production standpoint is astonishing to me yeah um I yeah. I really liked um I think it's early on like when they're first getting out of the trenches into no man's land mm-hmm. and they're looking around and there's all these corpses and barbed yeah. wire and smoke and bullets and just all the the details that went into that yeah. were were really good. Oh yeah. And Jojo Rabbit and the Irishman, sure. Yeah. yeah, I mean they were good in terms of production design, but yeah, I think those those three, nineteen seventeen, Once Upon a Time, and Parasite are the heavy hitters of the category. And I agree, I think Parasite is the shoe in for that. But I would be happy with nineteen seventeen or Once Upon a Time. Two uh, movies that I wish would have gotten in mm-hmm. uh, are The Lighthouse and oh, Midsommar. Yeah. Yes, um, yeah, because I mean the. The lighthouse. I mean, there's, there's honestly, in the grand scheme of things, not much to it. It's pretty much all on this one little island and this one little shack type of place. But um, knowing that they had to build all of that from scratch and um, and the way that it's all laid out, you get such a good feel for it. And then Midsommar, like mm-hmm. the the 
design in that village and like um the the big kind of boarding house kind of place with Mm -hmm. where everyone sleeps um and all the the paintings on the and the detail on that was really great and then just the colors on in in all of the the this little village uh, all the details that went into that were great um i know that both of them probably had slim to none chances of being nominated but you know it would have been nice yeah i i agree um how do you feel about editing um just in general like edit like how do you feel about editing this podcast if you were to (laughs) um that's a dumb joke i should cut it out but i probably won't because editing um you're like the uh 1917 of podcasts that is that is that is way too real (laughs) and that is way too close to the truth (laughs) so i didn't realize this until recently Mm -hmm. just how big of a deal best editing is because Mm -hmm. Um, I learned this, so I didn't really have it like loaded in the chamber, but there's only been one movie the past, I think 40 years that has one best picture that has not been nominated for best editing. Oh, that's interesting. And okay. it's a recent one. Um, that's one best picture. Correct. And hasn't been nominated for editing. Correct. Is it? Is it Green Book? Nope. Is it Moonlight? Nope. Is it uh, whatever came before that? <laughs> it is Birdman. Oh, 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 ooh, that that yeah. was a whole range of things there. <laughs> um, that's interesting. Yeah. Wow. So, huh. I mean, you may not put a whole lot of stock in the editing category mm-hmm. itself, but when you're trying to predict the Best Picture winner... You, it helps to look at what is and is not nominated. Right. So some of the front runners for Best Picture that are not nominated for Best Setting, Once Upon mm-hmm. a Time in Hollywood, mm-hmm. 1917. That would be interesting if that were <laughs> considering. Yeah. Um, so, um, again, the nominees are Ford v. Ferrari, The Irishman, Jojo Rabbit, Joker, and Parasite. So, hmm. I mean, Jojo Rabbit doesn't really have a big chance of winning yeah. best picture. And, and I mean kind of the same thing for the Irishman and Ford v Ferrari, but And see, I would love to see Ford v Ferrari get it. Yeah. Um sure the editing in Parasite is is remarkable and I also don't have a keen eye for editing. Yeah, Although I will either. say I had such a nit to pick with Little Women because the editing was so like just in terms of like the um I guess shot reverse shot of the of two people talking just was so just out of whack. I I couldn't I it took me out of the movie several times. But I would say that Ford v Ferrari I think would be my pick specifically because the way that the footage is cut in terms of showcasing the the racing and in the, the way that it's tells that visual story of all of the racing um uh plot <laughs> yeah the actual the actual auto racing is is incredibly just really uh well done i was i was very impressed by that um yeah 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 i i couldn't agree more mm-hmm. um i feel like it might be the irishman that wins it okay mostly based on name recognition mm-hmm. um Thelma Shoemaker, I think that's, I think I'm pronouncing her name right. Sure. Um, but she, I mean, uh, just based on the amount of footage that she surely had to whittle down to a three and a half hour movie, yeah, just uh, must have been insane. And for as long as it is, I mean, it it it. It has the momentum. I mean, it's it's a well constructed story. Mm-hmm. Um, chili dog or no chili dog. <laughs> um, so yeah. Uh, do you think Parasite has a chance? Maybe. Mm-hmm. I mean, I need to see it again. Um, I know that the editing didn't really stand out to me, but that's not saying a whole lot. Um, but. 
just the way that it um, that it told the story and made it so easy to follow. And I'm thinking of like the scene where they get rid of the um, the old housemaker, mm-hmm. maker sick. Yeah, um, yeah. The way that that was edited, I I really liked. Mm-hmm. Um, God, that movie's so clever. I I <laughs> love it so much. God. Yeah, I, I love it. Yes. Um, yeah. So, did you say your pick? Oh uh, man, this is uh, tough. So, I don't know. I'll probably just say The Irishman. Okay. Nice. Uh, yeah. Don't I... quote me on that, though. Right. <laughs> uh, I'm good with Ford v Ferrari. Honestly, that's oh, my. Okay. Sorry. Okay. Just to oh, interrupt. Yeah. No. Um, the ACE Film Eddies, which I think okay. are the editing guild. Okay. Um, I'm just going to read a headline. Parasite and Jojo Rabbit grab top awards. Oh, oh, Jojo Rabbit. Parasite editor huh. now becomes the Oscar frontrunner. Wow. So. Oh, that would be I good. I retract everything I just said. Sure. <laughs> <laughs> Which is standard operating procedure for all of the Obsessive Viewer podcast. Yep. Um, <laughs> kind of what we're known for. <laughs> show off your best editing and edit that last part out <laughs> oh i will you guys have no idea <laughs> um yeah a funny side side note just more of a brag on my part or a window into how empty my life is um the three and a half oh my voice cracked too so that's even perfect um the three and a half hour um year in review episode uh that took me like six hours to edit (laughs) um yeah i was going to post it about 12 hours early or no about 18 hours earlier than when i did but i finished editing it at 1 (laughs) a.m i started editing it at like 6 (laughs) p.m and i had to go to bed so yeah fair enough yep shall we move on to cinematography and visual effects let's do it Okay, and I can run them down. Uh, cinematography, we have The Irishman, Joker, The Lighthouse, 1917, and Once Upon a Time in Hollywood. And visual effects, we have Endgame, The Irishman, The Lion King, 1917, Star Wars Episode Nine: The Rise of Skywalker. Uh, quick note about Avengers Endgame. When I was listening to the Year in Review episode and we were talking about our top five, like the Obsessive Viewer 5, whatever... We ended up calling it, <laughs> and I got very slap happy and could not alphabetize for the life of me. <laughs> um, I still didn't alphabetize it right because I just referred to End- Avengers Endgame as Endgame. Yeah, so fair enough. Yeah. Anyway, so cinematography: Irishman, Joker, Lighthouse, 1917, Once Upon a Time. How do you feel about this category, and who do you pick? Oh, I am very glad that the Lighthouse got nominated. <laughs> me too. Um, if I mean. If it could only have one nomination, I'm glad this was it because mm. I was really impressed with it in that one. Yeah. Um, I don't know what the what I will officially pick or what I even want to pick because. Uh, so the the two that I would have are there only two? Yeah the the two that I would have loved to have seen. Uh, no, the just, sorry, just the one mm-hmm. is Ad Astra. And I'm surprised yeah. that it didn't get nominated here, especially, uh, it was done by Hoyt Van Hoytema, I believe is his oh, name. Oh, really? So, yeah. The guy that did that. Intercellar yeah. and a lot of Christopher Nolan movies. Wow. Um, huh. and the, the, the cinematography there was just incredible. Uh, all around. Um, so I would have liked to have seen it there or other besides the sound category. Um, I don't know. 1917 probably just because mm-hmm. it's Roger Deakins. Yeah. So. Yeah. And so I kind of struggle with 1917 from a cinematography standpoint. I think it is gorgeous. Yeah. Um, absolutely gorgeous. And... I think once they make the turn in it to where it turns tonight, 
um, that's when it really shines. Like that's where Roger Deakins does his Roger Deakins thing. Yeah, and then there's another scene where they like they go underground, I think, and they're only mm. lit up by their little flashlights. Yeah, that was really cool too. They're they're little flashlights that <laughs> kind of look like iPhones with yeah. the flashlight. Yeah, app. I thought that uh, too. Yeah, like that's all I kept thinking about when I was when I saw the trailer. Um, but yeah, there, there's some really good cinematography there. There's some really good lighting in, used in it. Uh, the photography aspect of it is, is great. Um, I say that speaking completely out of my ass, uh, <laughs> to a, uh, someone who is a professional photographer. Um, would you say? Someone that's been paid for photography in the past. Which is a professional photographer <laughs> in all accounts. Um, which you can find at bensearsphotography.com. That's exactly what I was going to say. Um, yes. So anyway, uh, yeah, I would not be upset if 1917 gets it. Um, in terms of cinematography, I don't really see, I mean, Joker, I guess could, could get it. Um, but something tells me Joker might get kind of shut out. I think, Hmm. um, I have no basis for that except for, yeah, I Just, don't yeah. I don't remember. I haven't paid attention to the precursors in this category mm-hmm. either. So, I don't know kind of what's the front runner here. Okay. But I'm going to go with 1917. Okay. Nice. Uh yeah, me too. Oh, the sorry, the other yes. one that I would nominate if I could. Oh, yeah. Uh Uncut Gems. Oh, oh yeah. So, yeah, which we should have a longer discussion about that. Oh, we will. Yeah. Oh. <laughs> That it hurts. Cause, it, yeah, because um, uh, there's the nightclub scene when it's all blacklit. Mm-hmm. That's great. Just the grittiness of the mm-hmm. whole movie. Um, it, it's part of what makes it work so well. Yeah, in the way that it sustains that grittiness throughout a completely propulsive, like energy, frenetic, propulsive shooting style and everything it's it still sustains that grittiness and that that kind of gritty atmosphere that uh is cinematography yeah um it's just it's uh, that that should have gone in that category what would you have taken out um the irishman okay nice yeah there wasn't i mean well in that case should i say who would you have taken out (laughs) and i'm making a finger gun um, maybe, I don't know. This is probably just speaking as an outsider who doesn't know a whole lot about like what goes into cinematography, but maybe once upon mm-hmm. a time in Hollywood as well. Yeah, I could, I could or Joker. See that. I don't know. Yeah. I wasn't really, from what I remember about Joker, I wasn't really blown away a whole lot by the cinematography there. Okay. Yeah. So, uh, best visual effects? Yeah. All right. uh, To run them down again, we have Avengers Endgame, The Irishman, The Lion King, 1917, and Star Wars Episode Nine: The Rise of Skywalker. Um, In terms of visual effects, how do you feel about these uh, entries? I will say, (laughs) The Irishman, the de-aging did not work for me in in a a lot of it, and I, I find that kind of baffling to me. Yeah. Um, I I don't think you're alone there. It is yeah. pretty noticeable. It's not perfect. Um so I, I I'm not unhappy that it wasn't nominated here. Um or no, it is nominated. I I, I don't know. Uh I think it's mostly just like a technical achievement just because it Yeah. they sustained it throughout so much of the movie on so many major characters. Um that's probably my best guess as to what got it in. Um, I feel like the Lion King probably has to be the front runner here, right? You think so? Yeah. I mean, yeah. as shitty as that movie is, right? Um, and as much as I don't want to be able to say Oscar winning Lion King, mm-hmm. um, I mean, the, that was really the only reason to see it. And, it is mm-hmm. an incredible visual achievement. I um, I would say it is a marked set marked market mark <laughs> set above uh it's it's 
it's above the the Jungle Book for me. Okay. I think that there was a lot of um, – because I remember, like, people going kind of crazy over the Jungle Book. And, like, yeah, for the most part it was. And I'm, <laughs> I'm going to step on something that I'm going to say in a second. But, um, like, I think that there was some – anachronistic kind of things or some uncanny valley things with the jungle book particularly when it was nighttime and there was rain involved with the lion king i feel like it was more refined and just better looking than than the jungle book was for sure right. and maybe part of that is that the lion king didn't have to incorporate a human character um into the movie so that yeah. could also be it but um, but that was also kind of its biggest downfall, just yeah. how photorealistic it was, you know, yeah, I guess. Yeah, that's true. Um, um, not to mention the vocal performances but mm-hmm. and the whole reason for it being, but that's another podcast episode. Yeah. <laughs> I will say 1917, there was kind of a – there was a kind of TV spot that showed a, a split screen of that big, like, run – sequence yeah and like on on the top half it showed the finished one and then it showed uh kind of a an aerial shot of the camera shooting that that scene and there's something kind of remarkable if you look at it like there's a road that is right beside where he's running that is completely scrubbed out in in the fin- not in the finished product and it's mm-hmm. like those kind of subtle like visual effects are are the bread and butter of big budget hollywood at this point yeah um so yeah and and i I feel like I should address that. Yeah, I did mention like the Irishman, the visual effects, the the de aging didn't work or anything. But also, I'm sure that there's a lot more that could have been done. Right. That that uh, was was great. I um for everyone that's saying Avengers Endgame, uh, I learned this last year. Unfortunately, after I made my pick in this category, the Marvel Cinematic Universe has never won this category. Never? Really? Yeah. Mm-hmm. Wow. How do you feel about Endgame then? You know, I feel and uh I feel like the visual effects uh in most of the Marvel movies has kind of been its a Achilles heel. Mm-hmm. Um but I I liked them in Endgame for the most part. Um considering all that they had to do uh they they made it look really good um so i i still don't think it's going to win mm-hmm. but um uh yeah i just think of that final battle scene yeah that is just so visually spectacular like just rendering everyone in like the, like right. that back like it's and considering it was probably all done on a soundstage. 100%. Yeah. yeah. Um, yeah. One, um, one that I would have really liked to see again to go back is Ad Astra in this category. Yeah. Um, there it's kind of good stuff. mind-boggling to me just how quickly Ad Astra kind of fell off the face of the earth. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Uh, um, much like Brad Pitt. Right. Uh, after <laughs> nice. that movie came out, just, I feel like it had some real awards buds. Yeah. Um, and I, I don't know what happened other than I guess it just wasn't campaigned for a whole lot. Uh, and you know, what's weird is that it also fell off with like, with us, especially with me and tiny, like, Tiny and I reviewed it, and, like, I remember in that review saying, like, I think I just watched the number one movie of the year for me. Yeah. Um, and it was barely an honorable mention. Granted, I saw a lot of good movies this the last year, but it's still, it's just, like, it's weird that that kind of fell off so much in, in terms of awards buzz and obsessive viewy buzz. <laughs> um, so... Uh yeah I yeah know. I mean there for me uh there was a version at one point of my top ten where I took it off mm-hmm. but then I realized like no it's there's there's nothing bad that I can say about this movie so yeah. um, otherwise it would be bad Astra um <laughs> leaving the dead air there bad Astra. um <laughs> so. Uh, that's, uh, not to kind of beat a dead horse, but mm-hmm. I, I would have liked to see Ad Astra there. Mm-hmm. Another one that 
had absolutely no chance, but I really liked the visual effects in was uh, Pokemon Detective Pikachu. Yeah, and just which was your number ten, sure which I was. respect. Yeah. yeah. Um. So I really liked um the way that all the Pokemon were incorporated. I liked the just. I mean, they obviously didn't look realistic, but. Mm-hmm they didn't try to be, you know? Yeah. Um, so they made them kind of a part in the, of this world that didn't really stick out like a sore thumb. Mm-hmm. Um, plus there's a scene where they do, or there's a couple scenes where they do this like 3d hologram kind of thing that was really interestingly done. Yeah. So uh, that's my hill that I'll die on. Sure. Did we talk about the rise of Skywalker? No. Okay. So I didn't I mean, block it up. It's a Star Wars <laughs> yeah. movie, so it's going to have good visual effects. I will say that the... <laughs> I'm going to try not to be snarky. Um, I will say that the end, like the climax of, of The Rise of Skywalker, that visually was was astounding. Um, I especially loved when all the hero's friends show up at the last minute to save the day and uh, in the way that something unprecedented Ray, for a Star Wars movie, yeah, <laughs> and for a Disney movie released yeah. in 2019, um, yeah, <laughs> I'm so, it's such an algorithm. I fuck uh, yeah. Uh, anyway, so, <laughs> uh, do you think it has a chance to win uh, best visual effects? Uh, no. I mean, I I don't want to say no because there's surprises every year, but. I think it's pretty low on the totem pole in sure. terms of these nominees. I don't know. Okay. Uh, shall we move on? Sure. So we've got uh, the next couple are best makeup and hairstyling and best original song. To be completely honest, I don't really have much to say about any of them, really. Yeah. Um. I'll just say the the makeup and hairstyling in Bombshell was really good. That's kind of I what agree. I hope wins. Yep. Um, the nominees are Bombshell, Joker, Judy, Maleficent, uh, Mistress of Evil in 1917. Uh, yeah, I think Bombshell has a chance there. Yeah. Um, I haven't seen Judy, but I feel like that could also kind of sneak in. I, I don't really know. I mean... Renee Zellweger has the the Judy Garland wig. Jesse mm. Buckley has this. I can't tell if it's a wig or uh, uh, or her hair, but she's got an interesting hairstyle. Um, that's about it, really. Um, yeah. Um, this is another one where Dolomite is my name could have been nominated. I think, mm-hmm. um, 1917 kind of confuses me as to why that got nominated for makeup and hairstyling. Yeah. Yeah. I guess I can understand makeup, especially with like the, um, like you said, when they're, when they're going through kind of no man's land or dead man's yeah. land or whatever. Um, and there's just corpses. Yeah. Um, yeah. Yeah. That's all I have to say. Um, original song, uh, yeah, I've got go. nothing on these <laughs> original songs. I can't let you throw yourself away from toy story Four. I'm going to love me again from rocket man. I'm standing with you from breakthrough, which I had never heard of before this. You hadn't heard of breakthrough. <laughs> no, it's, I mean, Hey, it's not my, not my bag, but it is one of those faith based, kind of things where it's like uh it's what's her name from this is us oh okay uh, chrissy i don't watch it yeah me, me neither but um um yeah it's on hbo so it's well uh, it's uh, yeah i i'm i don't want to but i feel like i have to watch it i have an obligation um, <laughs> yeah uh the other two are into the unknown from frozen 2 which is into probably the unknown win. Sorry, I can't. Yeah. Was that Idina Menzel? Uh, maybe. Here? I think yeah. so. Oh, oh, yeah. I see what you did <laughs> she there. She just popped in. And yeah. Oh, yeah. She left. popped in. See ya. <laughs> yeah. Uh, uh, I don't love you. Love you and uh, Uncut Gems should have been nominated. But, oh, yeah. Uh, and then Stand Up from Harriet. Yeah. So, did you watch Harriet? Not yet. Yeah. It didn't do anything for me, which 
it's I'll say this. It didn't do any anything for me and it kind of upset me because the story of Harriet Tubman is remarkable and should be like it, it deserved so much more than a kind of I don't want to say cookie cutter but a very just standard Oscar bait biopic thing. Yeah. And one of the things that really pissed me off about it is that it just it brushes over and granted maybe it's not the full reason of it but like it br- like I feel like the part of her story that it brushed over like her kind of um I won't spoil it it's real life but you know her uh her like wartime things that she did like I feel like that is a more it they should have more, focused on that? Not necessarily completely focused on it, but they should have focused more on it. Yeah. Um, in addition to the Underground Railroad railroad stuff. But I don't know. The only... Uh, I never really had a, mo- a motivation to see Harriet, but mm-hmm. I saw the trailer one time, and I know there's one part where one of the characters says, Welcome to the Underground Railroad. And that just <laughs> kind of made me laugh out loud. Yeah. Um, so I, I feel like it was doomed <laughs> from that point on. Yeah. I, 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 those kinds of, of lines in movies that it's, it's very, I don't want to say pandering, but it's very like hokey. Yeah. Um, but like, I just, I like, I, I like, um, I, I don't know. It's not even like the title of the movie, obviously, but like I I like the idea of like other movies doing that, like uh, doing something like uh, like 1917, like they're going through the trenches and everything. And they're like, ah, well, welcome to World War One. Yeah, really. And uh, <laughs> and like Kevin Garnett looking at the looking at the gem and being like, this is a real uncut gem. <laughs> um, yeah. So anyway. Or in um, bombshell, and they say this is a bombshell. Yes. <laughs> oh yeah. Um, best animated feature. Do we have anything more to say about that? About original what? song? Yeah. I one of the movies that I loved, uh, and I feel like you were kind of lukewarm on mm. was Wild Rose. Yeah. And I yeah. loved the songs in that. I listened to the soundtrack. The music was amazing. Yeah. That last song that she performs is like it belongs here. Mm-hmm. Like it belongs here for sure. So I'm I didn't expect any other nominations for it, but uh song I feel like it should have uh been in above, I don't know. Mm-hmm. breakthrough just because no one's heard of it um yeah well yeah yeah <laughs> so um but yeah we can move on okay best um, animated feature best animated feature this category didn't do much for me honestly this year was kind of weak for me but yeah was it your turn to say the nominees or no go ahead okay uh how to train your dragon the hidden world i lost my body claws uh missing link and toy story 4 uh, Toy Story. Um, so we reviewed Toy Story Four on the podcast, you and I. Yep. Um, and I still haven't revisited it or anything. Of this list, I've seen all of them. Um, I Lost My Body is a very interesting animated film, but it didn't really stick with me past like the interesting kind of concept. But I would say if I um had to pick one for it, I hate to betray my Pixar love, but. I think Claws is the most unique and uh, interesting movie of this batch. Hmm. Um, how do you feel about these nominees, and who would you pick? I would also agree that 2019 was kind of weak for animation. Mm-hmm. Um, I am shocked that Frozen 2 didn't get nominated. I, I am too. Yeah. Um, not that I really wanted it to be, but mm-hmm. um, yeah, I, I feel like that was... Uh, Klaus probably took its spot. Mm-hmm. Um, I have not. I've sort of watched How to Train Your Dragon: The Hidden World, mm-hmm. and I say that because I like I got it on uh, Redbox, mm-hmm. and my son watched it, and I kind of like half paid attention to it while he sure. was running around. <laughs> um, so I need to watch it again and pay attention to it Mm -hmm. i will a hundred percent back toy story 4 winning nice i would like it to win i don't know if it will um 
I liked Missing Link, and I like uh, what Leica, the studio that produced it, mm-hmm. does and their style. Um, See, with Missing Link, I thought that there was a Missing Link in the movie. <laughs> no, uh, I, I thought the animation style is very unique. It's, it's yeah. an interesting kind of thing that they do. But, man, I just – I didn't care about the story. Yeah. It wasn't um, really anything special. Yeah. Um, so, uh, I, I haven't seen Klaus yet, uh, but I probably will because it's on Netflix. Mm -hmm. Um, I would like to see I Lost My Body, Mm -hmm. uh, to some extent, not as much as Toy Story 4, but I feel like... like, when? Yes. Okay. Um, I think I Lost My Body, it won a couple of the precursors. Um, Okay. So I think it's kind of the front runner now, as surprising as that is. That is surprising because it's so out there. Yeah. Yeah. Um, I guess it it all just kind of depends on who campaigns for it more. Uh, yeah. Netflix or Toy Story or uh, Pixar. Yeah. I would say having seen all five of these movies, I think that it could definitely be a Klaus call <laughs> um, as to who wins the Oscar. <laughs> okay. <laughs> I'll allow it. <laughs> thank you. Thank you. Um, uh, yeah. Okay. Um, yeah, I I don't have any real snubs for that one. Okay. Yeah, because uh, aside from Frozen. Yeah. Yeah. Hang on. Um, Sorry. Next is uh, Best Adapted Screenplay. All right. That's where I have anyway. Yes. Same um, here. Do you want to double up adapted screenplay and original screenplay? I, although there's no really reason to. Yeah, that's anyway. fine. Yeah. Do you want to read them off? Yeah, I'll go ahead. Okay. Uh, best adapted screenplay: uh, The Irishman, Jojo Rabbit, Joker, Little Women, and The Two Popes. Best original screenplay: Knives Out. Marriage Story, 1917, Once Upon a Time in Hollywood, and Parasite. And I, this, both of these are really tough to pick. Mm-hmm. Um, I, it, it just kind of depends on where the Academy goes with it, really. Um, I'm really happy that Knives Out got nominated oh, there. Me too. I, I would have liked to see more nominations for it, but Same here. Um, I'm glad that I got it there. Uh, let's see. What else could have... Uh, oh. Yeah. Um, Uncut Gems could have been a pretty solid yeah. nomination. And I don't know if this would count as adapted or original, but The Farewell... A hundred percent got yeah. snubbed in this category. Definitely. Um, that's, it's such a good screenplay for that. I, and also, I mean, like I'm looking through the list like a few times now because I am still just really shocked that the lighthouse, did you already say that? Did we already talk about that? As uh, maybe, but yeah. we can say it again. Yeah. Um, Sorry, I was a little distracted. Um, but yeah, the, I'm still just astonished that the lighthouse is not anywhere on in the in the writing ones because just I oh, the screenwriting of that like even d- solely the dialogue is so just yeah it's it's incredible. Um, so yeah, I would have loved to have seen that nominated. Uh, yeah, the 1917 nomination is head scratching yeah uh, for me because that's that's for me anyway the the weakest part of that because there is very little in terms of a screenplay i and you know it it is something that i've wrestled with um it is very sparse on character development and everything but yeah. something that i came to terms with that i think i talked about in the last episode and in my review on the website is that it's more about just the sense of duty and, and honor and and it's almost an anti war movie in a sense. Like it's it's it goes against the traditional war movie narrative. But like many people have pointed out, it is a Call of Duty game. Um so it's something that I've wrestled with and 
it took me a long time to kind of come to terms with the writing of it, but if by default, like that, it doesn't belong here. I, I really right. don't think it does. Um, yeah. Um, I feel like I this this probably wouldn't be one of my picks, but I feel like I, I would be okay with Hustlers getting a screenplay nomination. Yeah, uh, for adapted um, above maybe Joker or the Two Popes. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah, I feel like the Two Popes is a movie that I just it missed me. I I I couldn't get into it. I yeah, I didn't really care for the screenplay of that one. Yeah, and I'm thinking specifically of like all the flashback scenes don't mm-hmm. really work, and just how exposition dumpy they kind of feel like. Yeah. So, have you given your adapted screenplay pick? Uh, no, I mean, I've heard that the way that Greta Gerwig adapted Little Women was incredible. Mm-hmm. Um, I read the book that The Irishman is based on, and it's it's pretty straightforward compared to, you know, from the book to the movie. Um, so, but from what I have heard about what Jojo Rabbit is based on, I feel like that was like one of the more inventive uh, adaptations that they could have done with it. Um, So I would like to see Jojo Rabbit um, win this. And I think at least for now, that's my official pick. That, yeah. Although I could see Little Women winning, just Mm -hmm. especially, which we'll get to later, because she got (laughs) snubbed in directing. Yes. Uh, Yeah. (laughs) But I I would say my pick for Adapted is... Little Women with Jojo Rabbit being the kind of second one. Yeah. Um, Little Women because, yes, the way that she adapted it, the way that she – because I haven't read the – I haven't read the Little Women. Yeah, me neither. But from what I understand of the way she adapted – like it's kind of brilliant the way that she incorporated some things from the book and and did something to kind of resonate today. Yeah. it, I, I thought that that was really, really well done. Um, Jojo Rabbit, because I think it's it's more clever than everything else in, in the nominee list. Yeah. Um, yeah. And so what's your pick for original? Oh, man. Um, I could see almost any of these winning except for 1917 and maybe Knives Out as well, just based on... You know, it's the only nomination for it. Um, Because Marriage Story had a fantastic screenplay, uh, Once Upon a Time in Hollywood. Um, Maybe wasn't the greatest of Tarantino's, but the Academy more or less loves Tarantino, so especially in screenwriting. Right, right. Um, But then again, Parasite, the screenplay for that was just... Uh, incredible as well. So, um, I think I'll say Marriage Story, honestly. Okay. Um, cause it's, it's a really solid, just the dialogue that was written for it, the, mm-hmm. the way that it balances yeah. all of these characters and makes them horrible, but redeem, redeemable mm-hmm. people at the end of the day. It's incredibly layered. Yeah. And it's so like um it's so it, like what we said in in the year in review episode like it's not a team team driver team uh Scarjo thing. It's it's a full-fledged kind of story. Yeah. Um with very many very different layers and everything. Yeah. Which you can say the same thing about Parasite as well, but Right. Um, and Knives Out. Um Yeah. Yeah. Uh, everything so, except for 1917 <laughs> pretty much so uh, i'll probably just say marriage story just to keep it going yeah i i would say marriage story as well because i i just i love i love 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 that movie and the the screenplay but i would be just ecstatic if ryan johnson wins for knives out yes i think that would be amazing i've seen that freaking movie five times now <laughs> three times this month it it grows on you it does not get old it's so oh i love it so much yeah okay 
Yep. Uh, so, uh, to kind of move along, do you want to do Best Actor? Yeah, go ahead. All right. So, the nominees for Best Actor are Antonio Banderas for Pain and Glory, Leonardo DiCaprio for Once Upon a Time in Hollywood, Adam Driver for Marriage Story, Joaquin Phoenix for Joker, and Jonathan Price for The Two Popes. Um, so, I've seen all except for Pain and Glory. Um, really want Adam Driver to win. I think that he did a phenomenal job in Marriage Story, like just mind-blowingly good. But also Leonardo DiCaprio was incredible. Like the the heart and soul of that movie is Rick Dalton and also Sharon Tate. But <laughs> it's it's just like it is so contingent. Like the power of the story is so contingent on Leonardo DiCaprio's performance, and he nailed it. Yeah. Um, I do also think Joaquin Phoenix actually has a shot here. Um, I, I think that that could be an interesting win. What is your take on Best Actor? I think it's going to be Joaquin Phoenix. Okay. Uh, and I base that only on the precursors. He's. Mm-hmm. I'm pretty sure he's won them all. He won the Golden Globe. Yeah. He won the SAG. Uh, I'm sure he won at least one other one, um, but it, it's going to be him. Um, so funny. Uh, so I've seen all of these. I've seen Pain and Glory. Nice. Um, Has so, Antonio Banderas won an Oscar? No. Okay. Which, How was he in Pain and Glory? Uh, so it's a very understated performance. Ooh. Very subtle. There's no big... I'm kind of curious about like what his Oscar clip is going to be. Mm-hmm. Um, I have a feeling I know what it is, but there's no like big like breakdown scenes. There's it's not a physical performance. Okay. Um, does he pay? Does he? Pl- sorry, does he play pain or glory? <laughs> Both. Oh, okay, good. Pain okay. and glory. Ooh, um, layered performance. I like that. <laughs> um, and then so. I feel like his nomination, as good as he was, um, we can get to who I would sub in and out for Mm -hmm. him. Um, But I feel like his was kind of a legacy nomination because he's never won. Oh, Um, So that's that's my theory. Um, Leonardo DiCaprio, yeah, he was good. He's got those, obviously, the... The long takes where he's shooting the the TV scene. Yeah, he's got the the scene with the little girl. Mm-hmm. Um, those are the two that stand out to me. Yeah. Um. So hmm. I don't know. He he wasn't. He was definitely not bad. Right. Um. But he's. I feel like he's done better. He's got better performances under him. Sure. I was kind of o- underwhelmed by Once Upon a Time in Hollywood overall, uh, yeah. if you can't tell. Yeah. Um, <laughs> so, uh, Adam Driver, if if he had any shot to win, he would be my pick. Yeah. Uh, 100%. Um, <laughs> funny story about Jonathan Price. Mm-hmm. When I was watching The Two Popes, the almost the entire time, I had him confused with Jared Harris from Chernobyl. Oh, wow. <laughs> so okay. the whole time I was just like blown away by the makeup <laughs> on him and just how <laughs> how different he looked and how good his accent was. Oh my God, that's awesome. <laughs> that and... is... <laughs> sorry, but that is, that is hilarious. I, I like that. I like that a lot. That uh, just show, goes to show you how much I know people in Hollywood mm-hmm. um, and how good I am with names and faces. Um, uh, that is, that's delightful. <laughs> I like that. <laughs> so the, yeah, I, I was also like, man, if, if this movie doesn't win best makeup and hairstyling, I'm going to be, uh, but, nice. um, but yeah, I mean, he's, he's good in the two popes. I would yeah. Kick him out. Right. But, um, so the, the two biggest snubs are, Adam Sandler and Eddie Murphy, I would say, right? Would yes. You, would oh, you agree? Yeah. If maybe Eddie Murphy had less of a chance, but Adam it's Sandler, not... there was such a big campaign for oh, him. Like it breaks my heart, honestly. Yeah. Um, and I I don't know if he would have had any shot at winning. Um, 
but I mean, at least now he's got an AARP movie for Grown Up Award to <laughs> right. fall back nice. on. So, um, but yeah, it's it's going to be Joaquin Phoenix, which he deserves. He yeah. was oh, he was, was the best part of that. Oh yeah, um, hmm. yeah. I'll I'll be happy when he wins. Yep. And but did man, he I did he win where. for Walk the Line? I I'm, I want to say yeah. I think but, he did. Yeah. But Joaquin the Line. But anyway, uh, Adam, <laughs> Adam Sandler. I mean, that movie just does not work without it, him, it without that performance. And I am well on record as just hating Adam Sandler. <laughs> but man, that is that is the far and away the best performance of his entire career, even including Punch Drunk Love um, and Grown Ups 2. Yeah. Um, and the dual performances of Jack and Jill. <laughs> but... Uh, but no, like it's it's far and away his best performance. It's one of the best performances I saw all year, and it's just it's painful that he wasn't nominated. Like I would sub him in for Jonathan Price. Yeah. Um, easy. Um, but yeah, that it's it's such a shame. So I don't know. Um, um the other one, if I had a magic bullet, I would <laughs> give it to Brad Pitt for this one. I know the chances of him being double nominated. Oh, for Ad Astra. We're we're slim to none, but mm-hmm. um, he that was I think you guys said it on the year in review episode that's mm-hmm. might be his or was that for Once Upon a Time in Hollywood? Uh, I believe it was at Astra. Okay, um, that's yeah. might be his best performance of, of his career. So, yeah. and I think Mike and Tiny made that point. I I was kind of silent because <laughs> um, I mean Fight Club Seven, yeah, like. I don't know, I, it, it, but it's a very understated, it's very internalized performance. So for Ad Astra, so it, it's tough, but yeah, yeah, yep. Shall we move on to Best Actress? Yeah. All right. So is it your turn? Yeah, I'll turn? go ahead. Okay. Uh, Best Actress: Cynthia Revo for Harriet, Scarlett Johansson, Marriage Story, Saoirse Ronan, Little Women, Charlize Theron for Bombshell, and Renee Zellweger for Judy. Yes. Um, I've seen all but Judy, and I'm pleased to see Cynthia Arriva, Arrivo nominated because her performance was was good, but that movie just did nothing. It did, didn't do much for me. If not say. only because she's the only non-white actor that was nominated throughout all the categories. Yeah. But anyway, yeah, that. Uh, but hey. They gave Green Book Best Picture last year, so they did their part. So we beat racism. <sighs> yes. Oh my! I, still, a year later, I'm still furious about that. Like yeah. that. Oh my god! Especially when you had Black Landsman nominated as well. That is such a just. <laughs> I I just almost said shit in the face. <laughs> That's not the expression. Um, but no, it it's such a just slap in the face. That's a word I'm looking for. But yeah. Sure. But for this crop of nominees for Best Actress, um, delighted to see ScarJo nom- double nominated for yes. uh, Best Actress and Best Supporting. Um, I loved her in Marriage Story, and I loved Saoirse Ronan in Little Women. That, either one of those, I would be happy with. Um, Saoirse Ronan in particular, I think, would be great as, as, as a winner, because she's, I mean, she's, she's an incredible performer. There's a scene in Little Women late in the movie where I just I felt I felt something so much, but then also, I feel like I've heard a clip of that. Yeah, yeah, I know um, what you're talking about. And it's funny because like I don't know stack that scene like there's a, the scene is with her and Timothy Chalamet. Stack that against ScarJo's scene with Adam Driver in Marriage Story, and like I don't know which one I th- I would have not more personal stake in not to mention scar joe's scene earlier in marriage story where she's talking to laura dern oh god yes yeah yes i think that that might be the tur- that might be that might be the turning point for me yeah i think i'll go with scar joe yep okay um yeah um yeah i mean Shirley theron's good i feel like her performance was more like imitation because she she yeah. nailed Megan Kelly, um, oh, yeah. and and in particular, there's there's a scene later uh, in the movie where uh, someone 
tells her some bad news over a headset while she's on TV. Mm -hmm. And they tell her not to react. And she doesn't. But you can just kind of see, like, behind her eyes, just, like, what she's thinking and what's going through her mind, which really impressed me there. Mm -hmm. But um, it's going to be Renee Zellweger. And I'm basing that mostly on precursors. um, And it's kind of a legacy nomination i feel like yeah yeah Um, and and don't get me wrong she's really good in judy Mm -hmm. um she doesn't really go like over the top and do you've seen judy yes i just watched it the other day okay wow okay um i have not seen it yet that's interesting yeah um it's it's a good performance and i i can't tell if she is singing in all of her singing scenes Mm or not but she um she does really well um awesome. and I'll I'm not I would like to see Scarjo win but I won't be mad when Renee Zellweger wins okay. the other uh obviously the biggest snub at least for me was Lupita Nyong'o yes that makes me angry me me too me um, too she hands down was a performance of the year you might say that it makes us angry yeah yes it makes us red with anger (laughs) um like we may go to the academy and winston duke it out um Mm -hmm. jordan peel back our anger um at crawdaddy i don't know um (laughs) keep going uh, keep going i don't know i feel like i'm slowing down i feel like i'm scissors jumpsuits yeah (laughs) i feel like i'm just slowing down like slow like moss on something (laughs) that was so lupita nyong'o i I took a hundred percent tim uh, heidegger on that i don't know needed to be nominated Uh, here 100 like take out unforgivable Take out, I don't know, probably Charlize Theron. I think so, too. And, like, Charlize Theron I liked. And I saw Bombshell once. Yeah. uh, A while ago. And, like, it was fine. Like, I remember coming out of it thinking, like, those were really good performances. But what dragged it down was the the very post the big shortness of it. Yeah. Like, it is very much like, like, I feel like. I don't. I don't like that. It's just like following in that footstep. In There's. Footsteps. It's becoming a trend now. Yeah, I, I don't it's like that. Getting annoying. Yeah. So. But I love just the themes of just like bonding together against the against the like the kind of oppressive nature of love, sexual harassment, and everything in the workplace. Like I yeah. like those themes, but I don't know. But and I I like the performances, but yeah, yeah. Um, the other. I don't know how much of a chance she had, but Aquafina, I would have yeah. been really happy seeing and getting nominated. We talked nominated. about that when we reviewed it. I, I would have loved that. And she actually won the Golden Globe, I think, for musical or comedy. Oh yeah. Okay. So, um, that maybe that is where the shortened calendar factored into it a little bit. Yeah. Um, but yeah, just I mean, at, at she. She was great. Um, she k- pretty much came out of nowhere, especially based on mm-hmm. the previous roles she's had through her career. Yeah. Um, oh, yeah. So, um, to a lesser extent, I mean, she had pretty much zero chance because no one saw it, but Elizabeth Moss for her smell. Yeah. Did you ever I've, see that? I didn't, but you did. You wrote a review on the website. Mm-hmm. Um, and yeah, I'm very interested in seeing it, but I just never got around to it. She, much like Adam Sandler, she is a hundred percent the reason why that movie works so well. Uh, it's, it's an insane performance and Mm -hmm. it's the energy that she has to give to keep that performance up was, uh, crazy. Um, but, but anyway, moving on, that's all I'll say. She... She had no chance, but uh, I will put in a good word for her. Mm-hmm. Nice. And to a even lesser extent, Ana de Armas, maybe for that would have been cool. That uh, would have been cool. Yeah, yeah. But uh, I, I can understand why why it didn't happen. Yeah, 
and plus that's more of an ensemble. It would be hard yeah. to kind of um, campaign for lead actress, I guess. Right. Shall we move on to best director? We've got two two categories left. Are you yeah. ready for the home stretch? Yeah, go for it. All right. So best director, Marty S for The Irishman, Toddy P for Joker, Sammy M for 1917, the footman himself, Quentin T, for Once Upon a Time in Hollywood, and... BJH. BJH <laughs> for Parasite. Try not to say something racist. No, I, no, that that was not my concern. Uh, now it is. But, yeah, those are the nominees. Uh, yeah, how do you feel about Best Director this year? Uh, you know, um, not having seen... Little Women, I can't weigh in too much on Greta Gerwig mm-hmm. not being nominated. Um, I mean, at the very least, just to break up the maleness of it. Yeah. Um, but from everything I've heard, she 100% deserves it. Yeah. Um, over <sighs> Todd Phillips getting nominated is it, yeah. anger-inducing to me. Um, yeah. Noah Bombeck getting snubbed? What? I, I, I do not that. get that. Like, there's such a theatrical energy to Marriage Story that, mm-hmm. like, like it's it's incredible the way that he tells that story, and it's it's from the heart. And there are sequences like we like like we've talked about on the podcast before. There are sequences where he is letting characters go and and run with it, and just the way that he puts these things together and directs them in these, in these specific ways is just very much award worthy in my opinion. And it's a shame. Yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah. Did you give your pick? Uh, no. Um, man, I don't know. Um, cause I can see, I guess, if you would have asked me maybe a month or two ago, mm-hmm. I would have said Scorsese. Um, but, I mean, since pretty much since the Golden Globes, that movie has kind of been falling off a cliff and yeah. I don't know if it'll win anything. Mm-hmm. Um, but uh, I could see this going down to Sam Mendes, Quentin Tarantino, and Bong Joon-ho. Yeah. Uh, personally, I would like to see uh, Bong Joon Ho win it because just, I mean, everything that you say about Parasite is because of him. Oh uh, yeah, almost completely. Uh, so uh, I can't imagine any other filmmaker making that movie and directing it the way that he did. Oh, it's um, so absolutely. Uh, I I. Th- I think he may be the front runner. Um, the, really, the the real test, and we're recording this before the DGA awards, so I didn't even realize that shit. <laughs> uh, it's I think it's like a week before the Oscars, so it's oh, okay. kind it of hard to feasible. do. Um, but I think whoever wins that will probably win it. So um, you can kind of splice in my. Uh, reading of their name once that's announced. Um, sure, so, sure. <laughs> <laughs> but I I would love to see Bong Joon Ho win it, and I think he's probably going to be my official pick. But I at the same time I wouldn't be mad if Tarantino wins it. Yeah, has Tarantino won it before? <sighs> probably not, because yeah. I don't think he won it for Pulp Fiction. I don't think so either. Um, I would say Bong Joon Ho all the way. Yeah. Um, yeah. That's my pick. Um, yeah. Shall we go to Best Picture? Yeah. Go okay. for it. All right. So we've come to it. The Best Picture nominees for the 92nd Academy Awards uh, coming February 9th. Uh, do you want to run them down? Is it your turn or mine? I'll go ahead. Oh, sure. Okay. Uh, best picture: Ford v Ferrari, Dawn of Speed. Yeah, <laughs> Dawn of Speed. Dawn of Cars. <laughs> uh, The Irishman, Jojo Rabbit, Joker, Little Women, Marriage Story, nineteen seventeen. Excuse me, nineteen seventeen. <laughs> Getting choked up at nineteen seventeen. 
<laughs> I just love it so much. <laughs> Once Upon a Time in Hollywood and Parasite. Yes. So, um, yeah. How do you feel about this crop of nominees? What? Eh, where should we begin? What do you think was was missing? Is missing out? Um, I'm fairly happy with those uh, nominees. I think. I mean, in a perfect world, the only other ones that I would add would be like the farewell, mm-hmm. uh, uncut gems, maybe. Um, Maybe knives out. Um, yeah, but I, I I think there was very small chance just because those are not the type of movies that uh, the Oscars tends to nominate. Yeah, I as much as I love knives out, I yeah, I, I don't know that it was ever ever in contention. Yeah, um, and you edited that part out when I said it would be a nominee on the uh, last episode i was on right <laughs> uh i believe i didn't <laughs> uh, we don't have to talk about that no no it's fine uh, um <laughs> so yeah I, I this is a pretty decent field i mean mm-hmm. um oh sorry to backtrack the mm-hmm. the other uh best director um the other director that I would put in over the over mm-hmm. all the men would be Lulu Wong mm-hmm. uh for the farewell. Um but anyway. Yep. Um so this I, I kind of am surprised that Ford V. Ferrari was a nominee. Um Yeah. I'm a little bit less surprised I guess at Jojo Rabbit. Mm-hmm. Um I guess it it did win it won some kind of major festival award. I forget what. Um, but uh, that's, I mean, considering the kind of movie that it is, it's its kind of bizarre that it, it's, it I'm really happy is. for it, but it's its bizarre that it's a Best Picture nominee. I Yeah, I agree. Um, so, yeah, the I mean, really the only one of these movies that I will be uh, – I don't want to say angry about, but like mm-hmm. green book level, uh, <laughs> upset about would be Joker just mm. because I have such a bad taste in my mouth from that movie. Yeah. Um, the rest. And I mean, as much as I didn't care for 1917, I would, eh, I could brush off it winning. It's there. There are worse things in the yeah, world. And I mean, it won drama for golden globes. Yeah. Which is surprising also. But, right. Yeah. And actually, uh, it's kind of the front runner because mm-hmm. it won the PGA award, the Producers oh, Guild it? Award. Yes. Okay. Um, plus it's got the, the, um, the Golden Globe. Mm-hmm. Um, but like I said earlier, it's not nominated for editing. So. Yeah. Do with that what you will. Mm-hmm. Um, and so. Though it, it is a war movie, it's kind of got a a gimmick, uh, quote unquote, that that works for the most part. Um, right. It was well directed, well performed, mm-hmm. uh, good effects, good message, more or less. Mm-hmm. Um, so there's that. Um, so I don't mm-hmm. feel. I feel like we can write off Ford v Ferrari uh, as a like major contender. Okay. And I feel like we can write off little women just because it's a movie about women. And the mm-hmm. only movie about women to ever win was, um, uh, all about Eve. Oh, um, wow. Way back Jeez. in like the fifties, I think. Yeah. Um, Jeez. plus it doesn't have, it was not nominated for best director. Mm hmm. Marriage Story, kind of the same thing. It's a uh, more of an indie drama uh, yeah. where No Bombback wasn't nominated uh, for director. Um, so mm-hmm. that kind of leaves Joker, The Irishman, uh, Once Upon a Time in Hollywood, and Parasite. Yeah, that's true. Of those, I would love to see Parasite. That, oh that, yeah, how 
how much of a long shot do you think that is? You know, it, it does have some things working in its favor. Mm-hmm. Um, I mean, it, it won the SAG award recently mm-hmm. for the best ensemble. Um, is that, was that where Bong Joon Ho, uh, talked about subtitles? Maybe, mm. uh, it was either that or the Golden Globes or, okay. uh, maybe the BAFTAs. I don't I, know. It may have been the BAFTAs. Yeah. Uh, yeah. But uh, that was, that was perfect. Yeah. I loved that. I mean, so much. cause really the only thing that's working against it is it's a foreign film and no foreign yeah. film has ever won best picture. Right. So just give it to Parasite already. Yeah. Oh yeah. It's, it's unquestionably, uh, an achievement for, filmmaking for everything uh that it's that it's doing it's mm-hmm. got a message that is resonant and it's something that the academy can kind of put out there and say this is what we do this is who we are um the only thing is we're not american but right. <laughs> um so i mean plus like i said it's uh, nominated for best setting so it's mm-hmm. got that working in its favor yep um yeah. Huh. You know, and as much as I feel like I don't know what the chances are, but once upon a time in Hollywood, um as much as they like the Academy likes to, you know, congratulate itself in terms of just movies about movies yeah. and Hollywood and everything, I feel like I would be okay if Once Upon a Time in Hollywood got it for that reason, like if that oh, yeah. was the reason why. Um, because it tells such an interesting story in that context. And yeah. it tells such an interesting uh, story about Hollywood that's a bygone era of Hollywood and like leaves on a note that's like, what if it still was still around? Right. So, yeah. And it, it kind of uh, plays to the elderly white men mm-hmm. in uh, that make up the voting uh body for best picture yeah um so it, it kind of plays to what they care about um so uh plus it's it's got the narrative as well of quentin tarantino it's supposedly his second to last movie and right right who knows if his next one will be any good or mm-hmm. worth best picture. Um, so I, I, yeah, I, I would be okay with it winning as yeah. much as I was, like I said, I was underwhelmed by it. Um, but I don't know how much of a chance it has. Yeah. Well, I guess we'll see February 9th. <laughs> um, um, the, yeah. the, the other thing, sorry, real quick, mm-hmm. to no, I'm kind of surprised at how um, how much the Irishman's chances have fallen. Yeah. Um, I think all the way up until the Night of the Golden Globes, it was kind of the favorite, really, mm-hmm. um, considering like its subject matter. It's a Scorsese movie. It might be his last... Mm-hmm. big like epic genre movie mm-hmm. uh and it, it is a very good movie yeah um, i i liked it so it's it's hard fun. to put a pin on exactly what's going against it really mm-hmm. um yeah all those chili dogs <laughs> um yeah i i don't know yeah um do we already give our final picks mm, man yeah. I'm just going to say Parasite. Yeah. Uh, I don't I, know how confident I feel about that, but. Me too. That's my want. Yeah. Really, my want is marriage story, <laughs> but that's very unlikely. Right. But I would, I would like Parasite to win. I think it will come down to 1917 or Once Upon a Time in Hollywood. Yeah. I think that that's what will happen. Um, or it might surprise us when we get Ford V Ferrari. Um, who knows? <laughs> Which, you know, I, I wouldn't be upset about either. Right. It's, it's, right. it is a good movie. Mm-hmm. Um, it's, uh, yeah, I don't know. Yeah. Um, well, I think that's it, right? Anything more? Um, chili dogs. Chili dogs. Yes. <laughs> uh, <laughs> 
kind of to this is kind of something that I've uh, had in the back of my mind. Uh, who would you say this? There's oh, really no it. organic way to bring this up, but okay. who would you say was the most underserved actress of 2019? Ooh. Would it be um, Liv Tyler in Ad Astra? Oh, I see. Zazzy yeah. Beats in Joker. Shit. Or Anna Paquin in uh, the, the Irishman. The Irishman. Um, I think combined they might have had like three lines. <laughs> yeah, I would say Liv Tyler honestly, because that was such an afterthought of a subplot in my eyes. Yeah. Um, and maybe that could be what partially contributed it to it just kind of falling by the wayside, much like Brad Pitt in the beginning <laughs> of the movie. Um. But yeah, oh, that's a tough question. I do really, really hate what they did to Zazie Beats and Joker. Yeah, um, especially her yeah. character. Yeah, oh yeah. And like with Liv Tyler, like why get her for that? Yeah. Why not just oh, yeah. get some unknown, yeah. nameless woman? Yep. Uh, or... It was very bizarre to me. Yeah, or spend time developing that subplot. <laughs> right, yeah. Yeah, it's... Oh, it was... That was... That was kind of the uh the i don't know the and most downer part of the movie Anna Paquin and her lack of involvement in the Irishman mm-hmm. I wasn't really too upset about I don't know if there was would have been an organic way to involve her more Yeah and there were there have been counter arguments about it but I don't really remember that much of them yeah. um and I th- eh, yeah I don't know it's, it is what it is. Yeah. Um, yeah. All right. Well, will that do it for this episode of the obsessive viewer? I believe so. Yes. Yes. Okay. Yeah. Okay. So that is it for this episode. Let us know what you think of the Oscar nominations, our wildly inaccurate picks <laughs> and conjecture and everything. Uh, just let us know what you think of everything tell matt to who he should put all of his money on <laughs> yes gamble yes and i'm gonna rope fecus into that too so like first give us the money <laughs> and then uh i will conveniently procrastinate uh, i'm not gonna say that um <laughs> first give us the money and then uh yeah we will surely vote for or we'll gamble the, it away for the oscars um I'm tired and hungry, so we're going to end this episode. <laughs> so uh, thank you once again, Ben, for coming on the show and for all your con- contributions to the website and everything. It is much, much appreciated, and it uh, it's exciting to have you on board for the next foreseeable future. The next foreseeable future. I don't know. Thanks for um, having me. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. If you can't tell, this is one of my favorite times of the year. So Oh, absolutely. Happy to be here. Yep. Yeah. Well, uh, yeah. I thought you were going to say it was one of your favorite things to do, but that's fine. Whatever. <laughs> I wouldn't go that far. <laughs> <laughs> oh, it stings. But <laughs> no. All right. Well, thank you guys so much for listening. I don't know what we're doing next time, but we'll do something. I'm sure I need to get Fekus back on. Fekus, when you're listening to this, uh, let me know what, what you want to do. Um, but yeah. Uh, yeah. Thank you guys so much for listening, and we will see you next time. And now, here's a short clip from our Patreon-exclusive RSS feed. To hear the full clip and more exclusive Patreon content, go to patreon.com slash obsessiveviewer and become a patron at the minimum rate of $1 per month. Thank you and enjoy. Did it say what the movie is or? It's a biopic of, I want to say, I know it's a composer, I want to say Leonard Bernstein. Okay, sure. Maybe. But. And I think Bradley Cooper is going to star in it again. So nice. Uh, yeah, I'm I'm excited. I wonder if his. What if? Okay, what if Bradley Cooper does this thing, where it's like a running thing throughout all of his films that he directs, where he directs and stars in it, and also pisses himself in the movie. <laughs> <laughs> I think that I would mean, be really interesting. I don't know much about Leonard Bernstein, but uh, <laughs> maybe he will. The Obsessive Viewer podcast is edited and produced by Matt Hurt and presented by ObsessiveViewer.com. For a full archive of our episodes, go to ObsessiveViewer.com slash OV archive. 
You can also like our Facebook page and join the OV Facebook group at facebook.com slash the obsessive viewer. And follow us on Twitter at obsessive viewer and at obsessive tiny. And follow our recurring co hosts at I am Mike White, that's me, at R A Feckus and at burger underscore lurker. If you enjoy the show, please take a couple minutes to leave us a rating and a quick review on Apple Podcasts. This is the easiest way to support what we do, and all it costs is a little bit of your time. If you'd like to donate to the podcast, you can make a PayPal donation at obsessiveviewer.com slash donate, or support us on Patreon for recurring donations and access to commentary tracks and B-roll audio recorded exclusively for patrons at patreon.com slash obsessiveviewer. Every donation goes toward paying the fees to keep the podcast running and is greatly appreciated. For official Obsessive Viewer merch, including shirts, mugs, phone cases, and more, visit our Tee Public store. You can find a link to the store in the show notes of this episode and at obsessiveviewer.com slash donate. Or you can simply search for Obsessive Viewer at teepublic.com, T-E-E, public.com. For information about our annual live event showcasing short horror films from local filmmakers, check out shocktoberinirvington.com. And for an archive of all our events, as well as news about potential future events, head over to obsessiveviewer.com slash live. For more podcast content, you can find Anthology, Matt's solo podcast covering The Twilight Zone, and other classic and contemporary science fiction anthology TV shows at anthologypod.com and on Twitter at OVAnthologyPod. You can also find Tower Junkies, a podcast where Matt and Tiny share their love of all things Stephen King and his magnum opus, The Dark Tower series, at TowerJunkiesPod.com and at TowerJunkiesPod on Twitter. And finally, check out The Secular Perspective, Tiny's side project podcast, which tackles current events and life's big questions from the perspective of secular hosts Chad and Amanda, at thesecularperspective.com. The theme music for The Obsessive Viewer comes courtesy of the band Loud Like from their EP, Mistakes We Must Make. Additional bumper music is provided courtesy of As Good As It Gets, which can be found at facebook.com slash band. Thank you so much for listening, and we'll see you next time. Kitty!